story begin, 130 years ago, the Silent Night made their first appearance to the world. The world was consumed in the maelstrom of war, and countless deaths ensued, life became grim, and people started to lose hope. One day, as death and destruction showed no ends of slowing down, the martial masters of the Murum world came together, and formed the Central Heavenly Alliance. The Central Heavenly Alliance decided to create a sect that would keep the Silent Night at bay, as such they elected a prominent martial artist, Buk Jin Hu and he became the first leader of the Northern Heavenly Sect. With the formation of this new sect, the Central Heavenly Alliance promised their support to them. They procured countless amounts of martial techniques and spiritual elixirs and thus allowed the Northern Heavenly Sect to grow in power and be able to successfully push back the advancement of the Silent Night. Time began to pass, and the second generation sect leader became Nam Moon San then the third generation Yu Kuang Yun and the Northern Heavenly Sect was highly respected which eventually led to thousands of prominent martial artists to gather at this place. The man known as the Great Wall of the North, Northern Heavenly Sect's fourth generation sect leader, the North Wall Jin Quan Ho, the pillars of the Northern Heavenly Sect the Great Four of the Northern Heavens. And this man is the Great Four of the Northern Heavens Demon Fist Zhou Chun Wu, and this is the Great Four of the Northern Heaven Tempest Storm Kyung Mu Sang. And this man is the Great Four of the Northern Heavens Cursed Ghost Blade Yun Chun Hua, and the last one the Great Four Ruler of Iron Blood Jae Hyuk Shim. These figures played a crucial role in keeping away the Silent Night from the Northern Lands. Then one day, as if the Silent Night reached their limits against the Northern Heavenly Sect, the Silent Night had disappeared. But then the North Wall had crumbled. This kid is Jin Mu 1 age 13 the son of Quan Ho. Quan Ho said it seems only the strongest have gathered here and thought the Nine Skies were powerful and untouchable figures who ruled over Murum, Central Heavenly Alliance, was this your doing? The Nine Skies seeker of knowledge Seo Moon Hua, an extraordinary prodigy who revived the once ruined Seo Moon family, his thirst for knowledge and passion for learning was what allowed him to attain the Heavenly Lord's wisdom. Moon Hua said sect leader Jin, are you planning to keep denying the truth till the end? Why did the protector against the Silent Night betray us? Quan Ho said I have always lived my life honestly, you are telling me that I was the one who betrayed you to the Silent Night? Stop saying such preposterous things. Moon Hua said the four pillars of the Northern Heavenly Sect have all testified against you, and yet you still insist on lying to us? Quan Ho look at his friends and wonders you my trusted friends who fought the same war with me for decades, you are my brothers, for what reason have you forsaken the Northern Heavenly Sect, I have truly become alone. So they all chose to band together and conspire against me, even if I try to fight out of this situation, they will do whatever they can to stop me. Quan Ho said I see how it is Central Heavenly Alliance, I shall obey you and comply with your wishes. Others start thought his internal force is unbelievably strong, the Northern Heavenly Sect have become far too strong from having to deal with the Silent Night, they have become quite a big obstacle for us. As long as the Northern Heavenly Sect stands, we will not have full control over the mainlands. Quan Ho announced starting form today, the Northern Heavenly Sect shall disband, the disciples of the Northern Heavenly Sect must leave and find a new home elsewhere. This shall be the last order given by me, Quan Ho is the leader of the Northern Heavenly Sect. However, my son who has lost his mother at an early age, and having to grow up alone in the barren lands of the Northern Lands, promise me you will not put a hand on him. Moon Hua thought it would be nice to put an end to his family, but it seems the mood will not allow me to do such. If we did not listen, then the leaders of the rival factions would have turned against us. Moon Hua promised. Quan Ho told Mu Wan, my son forgive me. Quan Ho stabbed the sword in his body in front of our protagonist Mu Wan. In order to protect the people form the Silent Night, the Northern Heavenly Sect was created with the help and support of the Central Heavenly Alliance. They faithfully carried out this duty for over a hundred years. But the fourth generation sect leader, Quan Ho was eventually betrayed by them. Three years later, Mu One opened up his eyes and asked just what are you guys doing right now? The man reply look at this bastard's eyes, I thought he was a weakling but it looks like he's more vicious than we thought. I don't know how the other group treated you, but I Pai San is not a kind person. You see I'm already pissed at the fact that we have to spend the next three years in this place because of a measly kid like you, now show me where you have hidden the weapons and martial techniques or you can let us kill you and we can go back to our mainland. Mu One laughed. Pai San said hey kiddo. I don't think you are quite understanding the situation you are in right now, you see we can simply throw you out into the wilderness and have the wolves tear you apart, that will be a much easier solution for us, since we don't have to spend the next three years withering away at this place, do you really think you will be able to do that? Next moment, 
Mu1 right index finger being broke by the Yaman. Mu1 yell the nine skies did you forget about the promise my father and the central heavenly alliance made? Back to earlier, the silent night had completely erased their presence from the world and the world began to believe they had finally disappeared, since the northern heavenly sect, who was the frontline defense against the silent night had been disbanded using the silent night making a sudden reappearance as the justification. The Central Heavenly Alliance would dispatch mercenaries like us in order to keep watch over the area. However that's all just an excuse, the true purpose was to keep watch over a certain individual, just in case he does not start learning the martial arts of the Northern Heavenly Sect and plans for his revenge. Being a guard is our true objective because eth person we are watching over is none other than, the descendant of the Northern Heavenly Sect and the last living blood of the former sect leader. The last group who kept watch stated, the former sect leader Quan Ho only allowed this boy to read books and nothing else, so he had no knowledge of martial arts. Anything pertaining to martial arts was all taken away by the Central Heavenly Alliance, and by the Great Four of the Northern Heavens as well and after thoroughly searching this place for anything hidden, they were unable to find them. Then one day, after doing nothing for a year, this boy seemed to have regained his senses because he stated that he needed to learn a skill that will allow him to earn a living, and thus started to practice blacksmithing. Pai San is the Central Heavenly Alliance's third mercenary group captain, he said it's hard to believe that the son of the Great Northern Heavenly Sect wants to learn blacksmithing as a way to survive, but what's even more hard to believe is that there are not any more martial scrolls hidden here somewhere, but if that's true then there is no reason for us to waste our time here for the next three years. The man beside is Vice Captain of Central Heavenly Alliance's third mercenary group, Mu Sang. Mu One noticed them and wonders they must be the new guards, looks like things are going to get annoying again. Location home of 10,000 spirits. As the name implies, this place used to hold over 10,000 Confucius and Martial Scrolls but the Great Four of the Northern Heavens took everything from this place, anything pertaining to sword techniques were all taken by the Cursed Ghost Blade, Chun Hua, anything pertaining to fist techniques were all taken by the Demon Fist, Chun Wu, anything pertaining to foot techniques were all taken by the Tempest Storm. Mu Sang and anything pertaining to refined qi cultivation were all taken by the Iron Blood ruler Hyuk Shim. A large amount of the Northern Heavenly Sex disciples ended up following the Great Four of the Northern Heavens and each of them took a part in destroying the Northern Heavenly Sect in order to find a ruling position in the mainlands. I've become utterly alone, no I've been abandoned. Mu One recalled back the moment his dad told him from now on you are the leader of the Northern Heavenly Sect. Outside of the Northern Heavenly Sect, no life exists within 10,000s meters. One could say that time had stopped, and the current destroyed state of the Northern Heavenly Sect was also a representation of the state in which Mu-1 was in. Mu-1 thought this is who I am. This is the current me. What a sorry state you are in, Mu-1. I did not climb in order to diminish my weakness, I climbed in order to build and solidify the foundation of my will. If I father now, everything my father did and the life he gave up would all be gone to waste. Back to the present, Mu Sang asked did we really have to go that far? He's but a mere child. Mu One said I doubt you are permitted to act this way. The Northern Heavenly Sex Martial Scrolls and Artifacts? Do you really think the Central Heavenly Alliance would leave any behind? They swept this place clean. You are going to kill me and go back to the mainlands? Then go ahead and try. Although they are disciples of the Great Four of the Northern Heavens, the only reason why they are with them is because they were forced to join them three years ago. There are still some loyal disciples of the Northern Heavenly Sect. Mu One said do you think they will let you get away with it? They will immediately know the difference between suicide and murder, and will not hesitate to come after your lives. Did you think the previous guards were all ignorant fools? They had the same idea as you. Did you not wonder why those guys did nothing but silently wait for the past three years? I San madly said how dare you talk like that. Mu Sang stopped Captain and said it's best that we let him go. What that child just said holds some truth. Haven't we already searched this place? This place does not have any more martial scrolls nor valuable artifacts. Mu One said let me be clear, this place is my home and you are intruders, so from now on I expect you guys to at least maintain proper behaviors as guests, if you guys do that, then I will look past what you did to me today. I San said kiddo, I am letting you go for now, but the moment you start doing anything suspicious, the Central Heavenly, Alliance and the Great Four of the Northern Heavens will give me permission to kill you. Mark my words. Let's go make sure to watch him carefully. Mu Sang told Mu One forgive us, you can use this to stop your bleeding. Soon, Mu One thought the loyal disciples of the Northern Heavenly Sect? Loyal disciples my ass, if they truly were loyal, 
then they would have come and rescued me from this hellhole already do you really think there are people who still care about a ruined sect? Nobody will care if I live or die, no I am sure they are wanting for me to die. Mu One thought it's true that everything was taken away from the Northern Heavenly Sect, but the heart of the Northern Heavenly Sect is still alive. The greatest secret of the Northern Heavenly Sect a secret not even the four great pillars of the Northern Heavens knows about the ultimate martial scroll of the Northern Heavenly Sect is the Northern Heavenly Sect itself. While the sun starts to set in the east, the ruined walls of the Northern Heavenly Sect start to cast a shadow on the ground. These walls are known as the Wall of Ten Thousand Shadows. The mysterious patterns on these walls turn into writings when drenched in sunlight, and these writings were based on a forgotten language from the Lower Moon Kingdom. The Wall of Ten Thousand Shadows was built by the first sect leader, Jin Hu and contained all of his writings. And this continued all the way down to the fourth generation sect leader, Quan Ho. For this reason only, my father made me learn the language of the Lower Moon Kingdom rather than practicing martial arts at an early age. To these people, the writings on these walls may merely look like ancient engravings. That is because it's intended for me to be the only one who can read the language of the Lower Moon Kingdom. Mu One thought because of this reason, it may seem like I am simply wasting my time being up here. I hope these guards continue to believe that. No I have to continue making them believe that. The combined teachings of the previous sect leaders are all written here. I still have a long way to go before I completely learn the ultimate martial art of the Northern Heavenly Sect, Gathering of the Ten Thousand Shadows. As long as I am being watched by the Central Heavenly Alliance, I can't bring any unwanted attention to myself, I need to keep everything hidden and patiently wait for my chance. Soon, Mu One noticed Huang Chul a former warrior of the Northern Heavenly Sect. Self-defense was the extent of his marital arts, and as such he was the weakest warrior in the Northern Heavenly Sect, however, nobody could match his loyalty and devotion to the sect. After leaving the Northern Heavenly Sect, he worked as a wandering merchant and would do his best to bring supplies for Mu One. Huang Chul was a lonely orphan who never once had any talent in martial arts. While all the other sects rejected him, the Northern Heavenly Sect accepted him. The sect leader, Quan Ho did everything he could to train Huang Chul the basics of martial arts so that he could at least protect his own body. Huang Chul had never forgotten that kindness, Due to this reason while everyone had left and moved on from the Northern Heavenly Sect, he was the only one who still continued to do everything he could for Mu One. Huang Chul asked have you been doing well? It seems you've gotten a lot taller since the last time I met you. The Huang Chul noticed Mu One's finger and asked did those bastards hurt you again? Was that done by the new guards? Mu One explained it was not them, they did not do anything, don't worry, I accidentally hurt my finger when I was blacksmithing. By the way you did not have to bring this much for me. Mu One said you should start living for yourself now, I am already thankful for all that you've done. Huang Chul replied but my heart cannot do that, without the Northern Heavenly Sect I would have been rotting away in Murum. Young Master should not be living his life this way as well. Mu One asked why is there a rock here? Huang Chul said I got that when I went to Southern Clouds, it was a rock that fell from the sky, and a certain tribe worshipped it as a sacred object. Huang Chul said but that tribe was massacred so the rock does not belong to anyone anymore. Mu One said massacred? Huang Chul said it seems they fought the Broken Fist's troop and the Broken Fist's troop has decided to settle down in Southern Clouds. After betraying the Northern Heavenly Sect, each of the Great Four of the Northern Heavens made their own martial force in Murim. The Cursed Ghost Blade, Chun Hua gathered a group of elite Qi Sword users and settled down in the West, they became known as the Protectors of the Western Heavens. The Tempest Storm Kyung Mu Sang, assembled a group called the, the Billowing Clouds but has not made any more. The Iron Blood Ruler Hyuk Shim supposedly had the biggest martial force and built the Iron Castle in the north. The Demon Fish Chun Wu who was known for his cruel and vicious nature created a bloodthirsty group called the Broken Fist Troop. Huang Chul said since the young master has picked up blacksmithing I brought some iron for you to use. Meanwhile, Mu Sang wonders so that man is Huang Chul he's nothing special his loyalty to the Northern Heavenly Sect is impressive, but it's unfortunate that the descendant of the Northern Heavenly Sect, Mu One is in such a pitiful state, he walks as if he has no purpose in life, wastes his time in the forge and climbs the top of a tower and gazes at the sky, I can't sense any chi or martial arts from him. That boy truly has nothing, that time when he talked about the Central Heavenly Alliance and the Great Four of the Northern Heavens, if he refined his story a little bit more, it would have been more believable for such a young age, he has remarkable decision-making skills, it's quite unfortunate, really, if he had at least learned martial arts from the North Wall, he would have been a strong leader. Then Mu Sang noticed a messenger hawk, 
Soon Pai San madly said after sending us to rot in this shithole, they did not even contact us once, and now they are telling us some highly esteemed guests are going to come over? This place is not like the Dong Ting Lake, it's not a place to come sightseeing. Start repairing one of the royal buildings first thing in the morning. Back to Mu Wan, he asked Mr. Huang what's happening in the world right now. Huang Chul replied the recent talks are all about a certain martial artist making a name in the world of Murum. His name is Dam Su Chun who stated that he will challenge 100 martial artists and win them all, that's why he's the center of attention in the world of Murum right now. Dam Su Chun is the third son of one of the nine skies, the unkillable master Dam Jek Shim, at first people laughed him and did not take him seriously. After all, he was merely a boy at the age of 18, but every time he challenged someone, he would wreak havoc and destruction, now his very essence brings fear and adoration from the people of Murum. Mu One wonders right now, I believe he has challenged 93 people? In any case, he has not lost a single one, if he manages to win 7 more, then he would set one of the greatest records in the history of Murum, people are calling this the 100 man challenge. He's only 18 years old? Huang Chul said at this rate, he will most definitely become formidable pillar in the world of Murum, according to rumors, he's apparently heading north, a lot of the sects around here are quite nervous right now. Mu Wan said he's impressive do you have any other news? Soon, Mu Wan told Huang Chul have a rest a bit, Huang Chul replied I can't I will be back after the winter, forgive me for not being or more used to you. Mu Wan said that's not true, you've done more than enough for me. After Huang Chul left, Mu Sang told Mu Wan I've been looking for you, it seems some esteemed guests of the Central Heavenly Alliance are coming next spring, so we were planning to repair and use the Hua Chun Palace. Mu Wan said do what you want, that building has long since been abandoned so it does not really matter anymore. If that's all you have to say, then I will take my leave. Afterward, Mu Wan went to 10,000 spirits, then someone took a dagger behind Mu Wan asked who are you? Mu Wan thought a woman's voice? He asked what do you mean? That's what I should be asking you. I am the owner of the place. The woman said the owner? Then are you telling me you are the descendant of the Northern Heavenly Sect? Mu Wan replied that's correct, now it's your turn to answer my question. The woman fainted before she could set her name. Mu Wan wonders why is there a woman here? What the hell is going on? Is she a criminal? What should I do? Wait I need first see if she's alive or not. Soon, Mu Wan carried her back and realized it's poison. She got attacked by some deadly poison chi. Mu Wan thought that's right I have the internal protection antidote. It's the only one I have left. I am making a big sacrifice by using this. I don't even know who this woman is. But whatever. I need to first poo this here, then here next. Soon, Mu Wan said I did everything I could seems like she stopped bleeding. Anyhow who are you and where did you come from? I keep getting more and more unwanted guests. After some times, the woman woke up and wonders who healed me? Mu Wan said you are awake? Just give me a second, I am almost done with your porridge. The woman thought but why did he heal me? Mu Wan said I thought you were as good as dead, since you were asleep for three days. The woman curious and asked but wait why did someone like you heal me? Mu One said first of all I don't know if you were an assassin sent to kill me, or just a passerby on the verge of death but I can't stand the sight of someone dying in front of me so I could not just leave you to die. At the very least I never want to see someone die in my house again. The woman wonders it does not seem like he has ill intentions and I also can't detect any chi from him. Is he actually doing this out of goodwill? Mu One said hurry and eat, even though I've been feeding you for the past three days, it's better for you to feed yourself now that you are awake. The woman said then I will stay here until I recover. Mu Wan replied deciding that all on your own. My goodness, what's your name? The woman asked why do you need to know my name? Mu Wan said listen here, not only did I heal you, I also let you sleep and eat here for free, you also decided to stay at my house all on your own, with all that's happened, should not you at least tell me what your name is? The woman said it's Yun Ha Sol. Mu Wan said I don't know if it will fit but there's someone clothes for you to change into over there, there's also some food in that storage room, so if you eat frugally, it will last you a couple of months. I'll be in the building next door, so if you need anything you will know where to find me, hurry and eat before the porridge gets too cold. After Mu Wan left, Ha Sol wonders I will need to first recover my internal energy, and draw out the poison slowly. I believe his name was Mu Wan, why is he going out of his way for someone like me? Does he not know who am I? What a weird guy. Meanwhile Mu Wan thought judging by that wound alone, she's no ordinary girl. All of this is a big risk, since it's uncertain who she is or where she's from, 
But the fact that I just willingly let her stay here was I really that lonely. Yun Ha Sol it's a pretty name. Afterward, Mu Won said she has not left the house in three days again, is she okay? Ha Sol thought in the end, I could only recover half of my internal energy, under normal circumstances I would need to have a full recovery of my internal state. Before I attempt to draw out the poison in my body but I have no time, it's the most dangerous poison out there, the consuming flames of darkness. Jin Mu Won I don't know what antidote he used but since the medicinal properties are starting to dwindle it seems the effects of that antidote is almost gone. It's getting harder for me to counteract the poison, it's dangerous, but I will need to draw out the rest of the poison with whatever internal energy I've recovered. Focus, you need to focus, ha soul. Then again the poison starts spread, she wonders is it an end? I did not get to thank him properly. Suddenly, a man jumped down from top and said please regain your senses, young miss, Please focus and utilize your internal energy. Channel the chi towards your fingers. You are almost there. The poison has been removed. I made it just in time. If I was a second too late, then the young miss would have died. Ha Sol said Sarayong. So you survived. Sarayong replied forgive me for being late. Young miss I had no idea you would be hiding at this place. I, Sarayong who lives for the sole purpose of serving both our master and the young miss has failed to protect the two of you. As such I shall receive my punishment with grace. Ha Sol said no it's okay, if it was not for you just now, I would have been dead, besides we were ambushed, there was not much you could do in that situation Sarayong. Where have you been this whole time? Sarayong said I was also injured and have been in hiding as well, it was only recently that I was able to locate the young miss. Ha Sol said why did not you go seek after our master first? Sarayong answered our master is not someone we need to worry so much about, our master will most definitely be safe. My priority for now is to help the young miss recover. Taking refuge in the northern heavenly sect was a smart choice. Those bastards will have a hard time believing that the young miss would be here in the first place. So for the time being I think it's best that the young miss stays here and recovers your internal energy. Please stay here for a bit longer while I find our master, I shall return with our master's orders. Soon. Mu Wan wonders the source of the first energy is promised with a shadow the second energy shall change the rule and the ten thousand shall become one. As the light covers the world I alone shall hold one shadow. The source of all things can only be inhabited by one energy, however a shadow shall always loom. This second energy shall change the way things are governed, ultimately causing all things to become one. The light may envelop the world but I shall only encompass the one true shadow like the void of the perpetual night may stretch across the sky eternally. The internal shadow shall be the same, as it shall exist somewhere within that darkness. Sensing entire area. Mu one thought there's nobody nearby. The first teaching from the gathering of the 10,000 shadows is the internal shadow. The first sect leader, Jin who was a vagabond, he was a genius swordsman who was able to create this martial art after many years of wandering. Because the nature of this martial art is shrouded in secrecy and darkness, just by looking at Mu One alone, most martial artists will have a hard time telling if he had built up any internal energy and learned any martial arts. Even after being passed down for four generations, the gathering of the 10,000 shadows was never able to reach its full potential, and remains as an unfinished work. This is the martial arts that Mu One is currently learning, if he had the choice of learning the gathering of the 10,000 shadows or not, he would have chosen the latter. However, since the Central Heavenly Alliance not only did take all of the usable martial arts, they also kept a strict watch on him, so he was left with no other choice. Soon, Ha Sol said so this is the Northern Heavenly Sect. Mu Wan said you look a lot better today. You have not come outside for the past few days, so I was beginning to worry if something happened to you. I am about to go and eat, so if you have not had anything feel free to join me. Ha Sol said I wanted to thank you for what you've done, it was thanks to you that I survived. Mu One said no problem, now come and eat. Ha Sol said I am fine. Mu One said no need to hold back, the food is not poisoned. Ha Sol said why have not you asked anything, about who I am? Mu One replied well I don't intend to pry. I just think it's best if I don't I get a gut feeling that I found out who you were, then I would not be able to enjoy my time with you anymore. Ha Sol asked are you stupid? Mu One said stop questioning my decision and just eat, I don't want to hear your stomach grumbling. Soon. Mu One wonders I can feel it, my body is starting to change, there is one more secret within the wall of 10,000 shadows it's time for my to start learning the blade of eternal darkness. A mysterious sword technique that was created with the sole purpose to kill, I've been learning to basics of swordsmanship so that I can properly utilize this sword technique. 
Afterward, while Mu Wan focusing on blacksmith work, he scared by Ha Sol. Ha Sol said I am not sure if you're good at concentrating or if your senses are dull, but I've been sitting here for quite some time. Anyhow I am hungry give me food. Mu Wan said it's been three months, three fucking months, how can you still be this shameless? Ha Sol said feed me. Ha Sol thought no matter how hard I look at him it does not make sense, not only does the descendant of the northern heavenly sex seem to not know any martial arts, he does not even have the basic knowledge for it, he's just wasting his time blacksmithing. Meanwhile, a group of martial artists arrived and said so this is the northern heavenly sect. Central heavenly alliance four dead heavens crimson kings demonic might Mui, and this is his son and daughter. Daughter Shim Sua age 14 and son Shim Wan Li age 19. And this is Central Heavenly Alliance Seo Moon family seeker of knowledge Moon Hua, and his granddaughter Hei Ryung age 20. This man is four dead heavens general Yun Pyeong, he asked is anyone here? Pai Sang immediately came out great them, general Yun asked have you prepared our rooms? Pai Sang replied of course, I personally prepared the rooms for our lords it must have been a long and difficult journey, allow me to escort you to your rooms. A man noticed Mu Sang and said I can't believe we are meeting each other here. Do you not remember me? It's me Yopwol. Soon, Hei Ryung said it's quite unfortunate. The once highly esteemed Northern Heavenly Sect is now in ruins. Wan Li said that's just how this world functions. If you lose your strength, then you will die. A good example is a hunting dog. After the hunt a hunting dog serves no purpose. Meanwhile, Ha Sol asked Mu Wan why are we always eating meat? Do you not have any other side dishes? Then Mu Wan noticed the guests. Hei Ryong said that must be the Northern Heavenly Sex descendant. Ha Sol thought there are so many unfamiliar people here, and I was not able to detect single one of them. My senses are getting dull, I'm getting too lax. You need to focus, Ha Sol don't let your guard down. Wan Li then introduced himself and his youngest sister. Mu Wan then introduced him and said the person next to me is a distant cousin who is temporarily residing at my place. I San whisper he has a cousin? Have you guys not checked who that girl was? What the hell have you guys been doing this whole time? Mu Sang said my apologies we were too focused on repairing the palace. Wan Li asked do you know who we are? Mu Wan said I've heard stories before, your names are also known all throughout Murim. Wan Li replied even at a shitty, forgive me, even the far north has heard of our names? Then I guess we can skip the formalities we will take some more later. Ha Sol thought he's not as dumb as I thought, I guess there are times when he can act this way, being able to lie without even blinking once, what an intriguing kid, but wait I thought this kid was the owner of this place, why is that man acting like he's the owner? Soon, Wan Li told General I came here in order to relish the former glory of the Northern Heavenly Sect but this place is more pathetic than I thought. The peace that is perceived in the mainland are merely the illusions created by the old geezers of the Central Heavenly Alliance. If they could they'd want to live forever in order to reap the benefits of this corruption that they've put into place. General Yun Peiyong said I shall do whatever I can to assist the future master of the four dead heavens. Wan Li said you will need to wait a couple more decades before I can inherit the four dead heavens, however I don't plan to wait that long, this place shall become the start of my foundation, but before that there's something that's been bothering me, I will need to deal with that first. Soon, Wan Li came to find Mu Wan and said I never realized the sound of a hammer can be this pleasant. Mu Wan thought how? I've been sensing the entire of this whole time, I did not detect him at all. Wan Li said for someone who has no internal energy, you are doing a pretty good job with standing all the heat inside this forge. This place is too dull it feels as if time has yet to move on. How dare you able to live in a place like this? Can I take a look at this blade? What a fine blade, a blade like this can be sold for a high price in the mainlands. The Wan Li point the blade towards Mu Wan. Wan Li said the descendant of the North Wall has not learned any martial arts? Let's stop with the bullshit? If you truly gave up, then you would not have stayed alive for this long. Mu Wan thought, what is he trying to do? What should I do? If I fight him now, then the situation can get worse. Not to mention that this person is the son of one of the nine skies of the Central Heavenly Alliance, I can't reveal my strength yet, everything that I've been enduring will all become meaningless. Next moment, Wan Li's blade stabbed towards Mu Wan. Hey Ryan came in and said stop it. She told Mu Wan please hold still we will need to stop your bleeding. Mu Wan thought it hurts, thanks goodness he missed my vital spot. Wan Li wonders he's unable to dodge a simple attack like that? Then are the rumors true? Does he really not know any martial arts? If that's the case what was that strange chi just now? Are my senses off today? It's possible since I've been on edge ever since I came to this unfamiliar territory. 
Hey Ryan asked just what are you doing, one Lee thought I guess I need to take it slow and observe him more thoroughly, I will have to rest for now, one Lee said what, I thought he could dodge something as simple as that, who knew he would be this pathetic, anyhow I will leave him to you, Hey Ryung said this is the fast spirit recovery pill, a renowned medicine with one of the best recovery effects, your wound should heal very quickly, Hey Ryung said forgive me, I had no idea that Master Shim would be this violent, I shall apologize in his stead, soon, Ha Sol asked did they do this to you, you are seriously an idiot, even if you are weaker than them, at least put up a fight or if you can't even do that, you should have at least tried to run away. Mu once said, thank you asides from Mr. Huang, it's been such a long time since someone has scolded me. Ha Sol said why are you like this all of a sudden, I might be leaving soon, since I've fully recovered. Back to earlier, Sarayong told Ha Sol I have just returned from our master, our master is safe and has made a full recovery. We will be making our move very soon, you will need to start preparing yourself. Meanwhile, Dam Su Chun said so this is the northern wastelands, what a strong life force it is quite a sight indeed. Then he noticed some peoples and said you are ruining my mood by hiding like rats over there, who are you? Show yourselves. A group of assassin type people came out, their leader said your senses are sharp, state who you are, and where you are headed. Su Chun thought who are these bastards, those are some interesting weapons that they have, the chi they are giving off is different from any other martial artist that I've fought before so there are still martial artists I've never seen before, the northern region is truly amazing. Su Chan answered why do I need to tell you guys anything? Their leader said I will keep it short, I will let you live if you quietly leave. Su Chan said I think you should be the one to do so, while I asking nicely. Assassin leader said we will assume you are here to provide support that woman, get him. Su Chan said I don't know who this woman you guys talking about, but if it's a fight you are looking for, then I will gladly welcome it. Next moment, they realized Su Chun is extremely strong, Su Chun grab over their weapon and immediately killed those who never released their chain. The leader said damn it, hurry and unsheath your blood blade, we will use the blood for blood destruction and finish him in one hit. Soon, Su Chun said they use the flesh for bones techniques, a technique saying when an opponent sacrifices their own body in an attempt to destroy their enemy. Su Chun said they are not your average martial artists, they were stronger than I thought, who the hell are they? I should have left one alive to question. Even the master of the swift blade sung one was not this strong. In any case I will not let anyone stop my path. I am almost there wait for me. Northern Heavenly Sect, here I come. Back to Mu One. Hey Ryang asked are you feeling better? I was just on my way to give you more medicine. Mu One replied it's not like this is my first time getting injured like this. Hey Ryang said allow me to apologize once more for what Master Shim has done as well as for us intruding upon your place without your permission. Mu One replied once again it's not the first time people have done that, but since you guys are already here please take your time to enjoy yourselves. Hey Ryong said I expected Master Jin to hold some resentment towards us, especially since our grandfathers are the nine skies of the Central Heavenly Alliance, not to mention my grandfather was the seeker of knowledge Moon Hua. But trust me when I say that I am different from my cruel grandfather, if there is anything I can do to help Master Jin, I won't hesitate to do so. Soon, Hei Ryung came to meet Wan Li. Hei Ryung madly said how many times do I have to tell you to not mess with that man. Wan Li said for fuck's sake I thought he would at least be able to dodge, like I said who knew he was going to be that pathetic. Hei Ryung said that man holds tremendous value to our plan, we will need to use his existence as the last descendant of the northern heavenly sect as best as we can, so make sure to keep that in mind. Meanwhile, a man seriously injured said the demon of the primordial chaos, Tae Mu Kang. Mu Kang said I am quite disappointed, they did not even put up a fight. Then a subordinate came to report hidden ghost troop after relaying their message of locating our targets, they went dormant for further orders, this was when we lost contact with them they were completely annihilated. Mu Kang said what? The elite force hidden ghost troop was destroyed? They were destroyed by some kid nonetheless? and this kid might be staying at the same place that girl is hiding at? What a turn of events. Well then, let's get going. Band of dark wolves. We are going hunting for some rabbits. Soon, Yapul came to find Mu Sang and said it took me a while to find you. You suddenly disappeared without saying anything so I was worried where you might have gone. I guess you are staying at this place. How have you been, my dear old friend? Mu Sang replied an old friend? I did not know you call people who steal another man's woman as a friend how fortunate you are, you even made it into the elite tiger guards, just focus on your own task, 
and don't ever show up in front of me again. Yalpul said you are still mad about that? Well I still feel guilty about what happened, but I told you this already she was the one who chose me. Not only that, she was the one who insisted on marrying. Mu Sang said shut your fucking mouth, don't fucking lie to me, she would never do that, how dare you continue to mock me, I will fucking kill you. Yalpul launched an attack and said calm yourself, I was trying to be nice, since I was able to meet you again, forgive me for saying this, but I believe it's time for you to face reality, my old friend. I am going to be here for a while, so it's near impossible for us to avoid each other, it's best that you fix your attitude now, I did not cut you very deep but before that wound gets any worse, go and get yourself treated. Back to Mu Wan, Ha Sol said that again? And what's this? Mu Wan said what are you confused about? It's a present. You said you were leaving soon, I wanted to give you something before we parted ways. Ha Sol thought it's a present and said really now, giving me a present in this day and age. Afterward, Ha Sol said so this is what a present is, it's a nice feeling it's pretty. Suddenly, Sarayung appeared and said I'm here to inform you that our master shall be arriving at this place very soon. What did you hide just now? Ha Sol said it's nothing for you to worry about. Sarayung said young miss is our one and only hope, so please keep that in mind, you must never have any personal attachments. Ha Sol replied I won't let that happen. Sarayung said then I shall trust the young miss, but then he wonders something's off. Meanwhile, Mu Sang thought he's lying that bastard is trying to deceive me, but wait what if he's actually telling the truth? Then why? Why did she leave me? Does Yop will have something I don't have? Well I guess that's true I am not particularly amazing, nor do I have any qualities that are superior to Yop Wool. he's talented enough oh join the elite guards of the four dead heavens, which is one of the great families of the nine skies, meanwhile I am slaving away in a faraway land, I've learned the way of the blue sky blade, but I am still only at the level of a beginner, just why can't I improve, despite all the efforts I'm putting in, is this the extent of my limit? I've been trying my best to forget about it all, but why am I constantly reminded? Why can't I escape this fate? Mark my words I will kill everyone. Suddenly a voice told me sang, dark illusions of the distrustful heart, when you start to doubt yourself, you will be consumed by the darkness inside your heart, the rage that burns inside of you will only lead to your downfall and will never be the answer to your problem. The part that you are looking at is only one of the many sides contained within you, this one side does not define who you are as a whole, once you calm the rage that is inside of you, you are like water, which can still flow from the lowest places, once shined by the sunlight, the water shall evaporate and rise into the atmosphere, the conviction of the heart is the same principle as this, once inside the atmosphere the, the billowing winds shall move the clouds, this is the same as the turmoil inside your heart, allow your meridian to become the sea, and your umbilical ring shall become your anchor, align your cerebral cortex to the heavens, and you shall govern the skies. Soon, Mu Sang wonders what's this chi, it's as if someone opened a door and guided me to the right path, who is that? Back to Mu Wan, he wonders let's stop for today, then he noticed immense chi from someone. Mu Wan thought what an intense aura he has, it feels like my legs might give out any second. He's a martial master. Su Chun said so this is the northern heavenly sect, quite impressive. Wan Li said my brother you are finally here, it must have been a long and difficult journey. Then they noticed Su Chun injured. Hey Ryang asked what happened? Your last opponent you had to fight in order to complete the 100 man challenge was the master of the swift blade, did you suffer those injuries from him? Su Chun said that man was definitely a worthy opponent, but he was not strong enough to wound me. Wan Li said then let's head in for now and get you treated, we can talk about what happened afterwards. I am curious as to know which bastard put the rising star of the eastern sky into the state. Mu Wan thought so he is central heavenly alliance sacred passage the enlightened pillar Dam Jek Shim third son. Dam Su Chun age 18. Su Chun said they looked pretty suspicious, but there was no need to worry, I am the man who shook the world of Muram Su Chun, anyhow who was that guy earlier? Hey Ryong said he is the descendant of the northern heavenly sect, Mu Wan, he's pretty pathetic so you don't need to concern yourself with him. Mu Wan thought I did not expect to meet him here, what is his relationship with them? But he had an intimidating aura, the strength of his chi is on another level. Soon, General Mok said I am here to deliver a message for the young master, you have been invited to dinner at the Hua Chun Palace. Mu Wan said the guests are inviting the owner, quite amusing alright, I will accept their invitation. General Mok said then please come to the Hua Chun Palace tomorrow around dinner time, they have granted permission for your cousin to come as well. Meanwhile, Su Chun said his chi is non-existent, 
nor could I sense any martial arts from him, but I definitely sense something different about him, whether he has it physically or spiritually. The strength and will of the Northern Heavenly Sect has been inherited by that man. Soon, Su Chun said you're finally here, it's an honor to meet you, Mu Wan introduced himself and wonders why is this guy here. Su Chun said I came here to express my thanks for accepting me into your residence without prior permissions, I've been wanting to come to the Northern Heavenly Sect for quite some time, and you have granted my wish, I sincerely thank you. Mu Wan said there is really nothing to see here, since everything is all in ruins, I hope you are not disappointed. Su Chun said what it looks like on the outside does not hold any importance to me. What's important is that I was able to see the one who has inherited the will of the Northern Heavenly Sect with my own eyes. Afterward, Mu One told Ha Sol I thought I told you will be fine on my own. Ha Sol replied nope, I don't have a good feeling about this. Besides I can smell something delicious here. Were you planning to eat all of that by yourself? Ha Sol wonders who is that lion looking man? While Su Chun wonders so that woman is Master Jin's cousin but is that the true? Those are not some normal chi, is she a bodyguard? What's certain is that she's definitely not an ordinary person. Su Chun said I sincerely thank you for accepting our invitation. Master Jin I want to first apologize for using the Hua Chun Palace and inviting you over without your permission. However we do have a reasonable explanation as to why we did this. Hey Ryung said we want to appoint the two of you as our seal of approval. Su Chun said we are planning to establish the Cerulean Dragon Society. Hey Ryong said the purpose of this organization is to create a system for the younger generation of martial artists to have a say in our politics. We want their voices to be heard in the Central Heavenly Alliance, there's currently only three of us, but we have the promise of support from numerous young martial artists. Mu One asked then why are you here at the Northern Heavenly Sect? Hey Ryong said the older generation of martial artists do not like it when the younger generation of martial artists come together to form a group. Su Chun said however, there is probably not a single marital artist who does not respect the Northern Heavenly Sect. Many of us have lived our lives revering the Northern Heavenly Sect. Their history of fighting the Silent Night for a hundred years is a deed that commands respect. That is why we wanted to establish our organization at this place. The purpose of this meeting is for us to swear our promise of the Cerulean Dragon Society to the heavens. And for that we want Master Jin to be out witness unto the gods and have you give us your sign of approval. Mu One said I understand I shall witness your promise with my own eyes. Meanwhile, a guard said why are we always put on watch duty? Another guard said I know right? I thought since those people came, we would have a chance to join the four dead heavens. Another guard said as if that would happen, if fact, they treat us more like shit. While they are chatting, a huge shadow covered them up. Mu Sang sensed something wrong and asked to stand at the northwest entrance and immediately head towards. Soon, when they arrived, all the guards here dead. Back to Mu One, Ha Sol told him they are a bunch of idiots. Mu One said you are right but they are a scary bunch of idiots. Ha Sol said just stay next to me I will protect you. Mu One said I will take that offer, thank you. Ha Sol said well I'm only going to protect you until I leave. Su Chan questioned Mu One will you come with me for a second, I have something I wish to discuss with you. Hey Ryong came to ask Ha Sol how was the meal? Ha Sol replied when will you stop tormenting him? There was no need for you guys to invite him here today. Hey Ryong said as stated, we needed him to give us his sign of approval I apologize if that offended Master Jin. Ha Sol said just stop bothering him even without you guys, his life is already miserable and bleak. Su Ah said the way I see it, you seem to be the one who is causing more burden to him than us, he did not complain about our proposition so why are you stepping in? I know that you are his cousin and all, but you should really know your place. You are not much different from us. I can tell you are also taking advantage of his hospitality. Suddenly Ha Sol sensed something. Meanwhile, Su Chun told Mu One I apologize for the sudden request for you sign of approval without prior discussions. I know you are most likely displeased with this whole situation but I have one more selfish request to make. Please join the Cerulean Dragon Society. Let's try to change the world together. Suddenly, Mu Kang asked where are you at, kiddo? Mu Kang immediately wipe off those guard who try to stop him. Then Su Chun, jumped all the way here introduced himself and said who are you to wreak havoc at this place? Mu Kang said so you are the kid who's been using that fancy nickname, the rising star of the eastern sky. So you are the one who took out my hidden ghost troop, this kid, can you believe it? Su Chun thought so they are both from the same group, then just as I thought these guys are not martial artists from the mainlands. Su Chun asked are you guys perhaps the silent knight? Mu Kang replied rather than fear, it seems your eyes are brimming with excitement kid. 
Yelp Fool came in and report the situation outside. Ha Sol thought I did not expect that monster to follow me all the way over here. Mew1 asked Ha Sol are you okay? Ha Sol said that monster out there is not someone any of you guys can hope to beat, you need to get out of here. Mew1 said I think it's a little too late for that. One Lee said who are these bastards? Why has not the elite tiger guards taken care of them already? Hey Ryung thought let's calm down and think no matter how I look at it. These people are most definitely the silent knight. But why is the silent knight making a sudden reappearance after decades of disappearance? If the people find out about this, then the whole world will be thrown into chaos. But wait what if Master Dam is able to beat them? Ha Sol told Mew one don't step past me. Back to Su Chun, he said I will finish this as fast as I can. Next moment, Mew Kang thought is this perhaps the light of enlightenment? Su Chun said if you are the silent knight, then the name of this Su Chun shall have a chance to be held in the highest regard. After a few rounds of attack, Mew Kang seriously injured, Su Chun said did I overdo it? The attack drains more mental strength than I thought when I get the chance I shall also return the favor and find out more about you. Next second, Mew Kang, stand up and recovered his body and said you are not bad, however you won't be able to take me down with just that. Su Chun being hit by chaotic spin of the demonic dive, Mew Kang said you were taken out with just that, rising star of the eastern sky, did you really think you stood at the peak of this world, after beating some martial artists who have become drunk on peace? Since I see some potential in you, I will let you live for today. Come find me after you have become stronger, only then will I have fun killing you. Even Su Chun in injured state, he still hold Mew Kang and don't let him go. Suddenly, Su Ah said stop it do you not know who we are? Wan Li then noticed Su Ah went out. Mew Kang ignored her word and kill Su Ah in an instant. Wan Li madly dash out and try to kill Mew Kang but immediately stopped by Mew Kang. Mew Kang said it seems this place is filled with useless small fries. Ha Sol told Mew Wan what are you spacing out for, I told you to stay behind me. Hey Ryung thought the young sister died, what the hell is going on right now? This was not part of my plan, where did the monster come from? Are we his targets? But why? Does he truly not know who we are? Perhaps Mew Wan ordered this attack? No he does not look like he's a part of their group was this purely bad luck? Let's calm down, my main focus should not be about finding out nor why he's attacking us. What's important here is that I need to find out more information regarding the Silent Knight. Hey Ryung said elder sister, the situation is not looking good, let's relocate elsewhere, abandon everyone only take Master Dam and Master Shim with us. Hey Ryung thought Mew One, depending on how we used you, your value would have been tremendous to our plan, it's unfortunate but I will have to throw you away, I will have to return back to the mainlands and prepare a new plan. For now my main priority is to make sure nobody can find out Abu the loss that Master Dam suffered today. Hey Ryung cast enveloping fate of the heavenly illusion. Mew One thought how is that possible? She's able to spread her spiritual energy without using any tools or mediums. I can tell how she's the granddaughter of Moon Hua, so that's the strength of the great Seo Moon family. Mew Kang thought what's this? What an interesting illusion. Hey Ryung said that monster will break out of his illusion very soon, we will need to leave before that happens. Mew One thought they knew they were abandoned, yet they still did their best to buy some time for them. What's the point of dying for your liege when they will never acknowledge your deed? Is it perhaps because they seek honor and glory? But what use would that be when you are dead? The way I see it, they died a dog's death. Soon, Mew Kang break through the illusion and said did they escape? Not bad, come back when you're stronger, I want to enjoy my fights. In any case, my target is that girl. Hey kiddo we finally met again. Ha Sol said demon of chaos the unkillable monster, she told Mew one hurry and get out of here. Mew Kang said since you are that woman's one and only hope I will need to thoroughly kill you, I wonder if that will be enough to shake the heart of that witch, I have to witness her distraught with my own eyes, blame that woman for putting you into this fate. Next second, Mew one noticed Ha Sol transform into will of the silver spirit. Mew one thought within the silent night, there is a ruler of the night who holds absolute authority. There are also four demon lords who support this ruler, they are known as the Whirlwind of Darkness, Black God of Spear, Berserker of Destruction and the Witch of White Knight. These four act as proxy for the ruler of the night, and exercise their tremendous power in his stead, the terror and destruction caused by these four were so bad, that even mentioning their names were prohibited, the strength of these four were the same, if not stronger than the nine skies of the Central Heavenly Alliance. I knew she was not normal but I did not expect Ha Sol to be the descendant of the Witch of White Knight. Mew Kang said I am surprised you are not running away today, you already know you can't win against me. 
Ha Sol thought I won't be able to hold him back for too long, you will need to use this time to escape, Mu Wan. I guess he already left. I am glad. Next moment, Mu Kang lifted Ha Sol up and said you are actually giving up your life for that kid who abandoned you without a second though. Quite foolish indeed. This is the end. Ha Sol thought Mu Wan you are the only person who has shown me affection. Thank you and goodbye. Suddenly, Mu Wan sliced on Mu Kang arm and said sorry it took longer than I expected. Mu Kang surprised and said what was that just now? Who the hell are you? Mu Wan said I am the Northern Heavenly Sex 5th Generation Leader. Ha Sol said you left me to find a blade? Mu Wan said don't step past me just stay behind me. Mu Kang said those are some strange powers you are using. Mu Kang thought my body was made to be unkillable why is not my wound healing itself? Mu Wan thought how long will I be able to use it? No will I even be able to use it? To think that I have to fight this demon for my first real combat. This is the worst situation I could ever be in. Mu Kang said your chi is quite unsettling I will most certainly have to get rid of you. Mu Wan dodged the attacks of Mu Kang again and again. Meanwhile, Mu Sang thought all of the guards have been taken out. What the hell is going on right now? The he noticed Pai San. Pai San said what are you confused about? Some wolf bastards came in and started a fight with us. I nearly died over there. What are you doing? Don't go back where I came from. That place is crawling with those wolves. Hurry and get out of here. Mu Sang said what are you talking about? Our comrades have all been slaughtered by those bastards. Should not we at least avenge their deaths? Pai San replied what kind of bullshit are you spouting? Now is not the time for us to be doing that. We need to just leave this place. Mu Sang said those guys were loyal warriors who trusted you. They were even willing to give up their lives for someone like you. You should at least do your part as their leader, and honor that respect they had you. Pai San said stop with your fucking nonsense. We can avenge their deaths later. We need to first survive. Mu Sang kicked on him and said you fucking trash of a human being. And head towards back. Back to Ha Sol. She wonders is that really the Mew one that I know? Has he been hiding his skills this whole time? But even now, I can't even feel his chi. Mew one just what kind of martial arts did you learn? Mew Kang jumped on Sky and said I will completely erase your existence. Mew Kang cast chaotic reign of destruction. Mew one thought even if I sense the entire area I don't think I can avoid all of that what should I do? Mew Sang said what the hell is that? All of the buildings have been completely flattened. This place is no different form of battlefield. I believe this is where the Hua Chun Palace was. Were not they holding a meeting here? Mu Sang spotted Yop Wool, and madly said you can't die on me yet, if you die, what am I going to do with all this anger within me? Back to Mu Wan, he wonders I will need to first evacuate her then Mu Wan spotted some words and thought with a shadowed blade, both heaven and hell were decimated, wait the shadow which slays both gods and demons? Mu Wan cast the shadowed blade of the end, waves of desolation, meanwhile, Mu Sang wonders is not that Mu Wan? How is he? He looks just like a shadow. Mu Wan protected Ha Sol from the attacks and immediately dashed towards Mu Kang. Mu Kang thought he's not just a normal kid I will be killed, he may be a tiger without fangs, but he's tiger nonetheless. Mu Kang cast a sudden attack hit on Mu Wan and said you are pissing me off, where did you learn this strange martial arts? Then Mu Kang noticed his arm injured. Mu Wan thought I can't even breath properly I am at my limit, what do I do now? Mu Kang wonders because of the undying flames of chaos, this body is the closest thing to immortality and you are telling me my wounds won't heal itself? Mu Kang said you are different from the kids before you, it pisses me off that you've been hiding your skills, what kind of martial arts did you learn, you see the type of fights that I enjoy are opponents who can put my life on the line, it pisses me off that I am wasting my time on you like this, it makes me want to kill you. Ha Sol cast a hit on Mu Kang. Mu Kang madly returned with another blow and said looks like you are begging to be killed as well. While, Mu Kang about to kill Ha Sol, Sarayong stepped in as well as the Witch of White Knight, Demon Lord of the Silent Knight, Jiam Hyong. Jiam Hyong said Demon of Chaos, you should have never been brought into this world. Mu Kang replied you people of the Silent Knight were the ones who created me. Sarayong told Ha Sol forgive me for being late and wonders will of the Silver Spirit. It requires the young miss to have a calm sense of reasoning. In other words, the young miss must transcend past the five worldly desires and seven humanly emotions. However due to that boy, it seems the young miss is starting to develop her emotions and is causing everything to fall apart. Just look at the state the young miss is in. There was no need for her to end up like this. The most dangerous people in the world of Muram are bastards like him who hide their inner abilities. Not to mention he's the mortal enemy of the silent knight. 
He's the future sect leader of the Northern Heavenly Sect, everyone believed that the Northern Heavenly Sect had been completely destroyed. But that does not seem to be the case anymore, it seems this boy was a ferocious beast that had been hiding his claws. I will have to kill him here. Ha Sol noticed and said please don't kill him. That boy has done nothing wrong, it's my fault, I came and hid here without his permission and he showed mercy without expecting anything in return, it's the first time in my life that I received so much kindness and affection from someone. He's the one who saved my life. Sarayong said in any case, please drink this, this is the godly pill of great recovery, a miracle medicine renowned for healing wounds. Jiam Hyang said the only reason why you were successful last time was because I was caught off guard by your cowardly ambush. Under normal circumstances, your measly chi that utilizes the undying flames of chaos will do nothing against me. I will not lose twice. Moonlight rotation. Soon, Mu Wan woke up from his unconscious. Jiam Hyang said the man has fled, you must be the last living bloodline of the Northern Heavenly Sect. Jiam Hyang thought everyone perceived him to be a tiger cub without any fangs, however it seems all of that is untrue, not only are his fangs still intact, but he's also a full-grown tiger, a great tiger with deadly fangs, a sprout with a potential to revitalize the future is best to be uprooted early. Ha Sol yell please stop master, he's someone I am indebted to, please master, just this once, I've always listened and obeyed all of your orders without question, but this will be my first and last request so please. GM Hyang wonders the Ha Sol in the past would not have made this kind of request, as expected that boy is changing her. Ha Sol begs her master. GM Hyang said fine, however you will learn the ultimate technique silver light of the ice crystal, do you understand? Sarayong thought the time has come. Our master who was hesitant to teach her that technique due to it being extremely dangerous, has finally decided to speed up the completion process the will of the silver spirit. Ha Sol said as you wish, master. She told Mu Wan, please eat this. Mu Wan said I am sorry for showing such an embarrassing side of myself. Ha Sol hug on Mu Wan and said I have to go back now. After they left, Mu Wan recalled back the word of Jiam Hyang, I am warning you now, do not appear before our Ha Sol a second time, do not heed my warning lightly. Mu Wan thought mark my words, I will get stronger I swear upon the heavens. Meanwhile, Mu Sang thought so in the end. The will and spirit of the Northern Heavenly Sect has successfully been passed down to Mu Wan, I can't believe he's been hiding all that strength this whole time. Then Mu Sang wondered earlier was it him who enlightened me back then? Why would he do that for me? Mu Wan said if you are planning to kill me, now is your perfect time to do so, why are you hesitating? Soon, Mu Sang burn all the corpses. He told Mu Wan so you finally came out after 5 days, what are you doing? Mu Wan pick up the rock Mr. Huang give it to him. Mu Sang asked are you leaving now? Mu Wan said it's time for me to leave this place. Mu Sang thought pretty soon, the Central Heavenly Alliance will dispatch some people to come and investigate this place, they will find out about the existence of that monster, as well as the reappearance of the Silent Knight, then there is also the case of Mu Wan. The Central Heavenly Alliance will not take this situation lightly. Even if I was not directly involved in this situation I will still be tied to it somehow. Mu Sang told Mu Wan I will have to go back to the Central Heavenly Alliance, I will have some work to do. Mu Wan said if I leave this place, I will be the only survivor of this incident, they will try their best to extract as much information as they can from you, you will face a lot of hardships. Mu Sang said Yir you are right, but don't worry I won't ever tell them you survived, I swear that upon my life and the gods. I am also sorry for my actions in the past, I truly respect your ancestors, so it made me extremely disappointed seeing the pathetic side of yourself, I could not accept the fact that you were the heir of the people I truly admired. I also wanted to thank you for enlightening me back then. Mu Wan said it was not much. Mu Sang Ni and said I shall henceforth serve Master Jin Mu Wan as my leech. I shall swear upon all the gods and the heavens that I shall only live and die for Master Jin Mu Wan. From today and onwards, you are my one and only leech. Mu Sang thought the Northern Heavenly Sect will be revived through this man. In an era where conspiracy and betrayals are ever so prevalent, you won't find another man like him, whose spirit rings with truth and is guided by an unbending will. If a man like him is not worthy enough to be my liege, then who is? Mu Sang said my lord I humble request for your acceptance, I shall become your blade and slay thine enemies. Mu Wan said please stand, I have heard your desire, I shall accept, you shall now become my first blade. Soon, they burn off everything, back to earlier, Mr. Huang came over and asked what happened here? I heard that the descendants of the Nine Skies had come to the Northern Heavenly Sect. 
their arrogance knows no bounds how dare they come to this place, young master are you hurt anywhere, what happened to this place, forgive me for not coming any soon. Back to present, Mu Sang said my lord until we meet again please stay safe and healthy. Mu Wan said I don't know how long I will take, Mu Sang said that does not matter I shall wait for your return. Mu Wan said then please take care as well. Mu Sang thought a dragon has left in order to gain wings on his back, I must wait for his return and prepare for his future. That shall be my first duty. Soon, Mu Sang said finally here, so Master Shim and Lady Hei Ryong must have made their way over to the Central Heavenly Alliance's Western Stronghold. The General said we've heard that the Silent Knight has made an appearance here, who the hell are you? State yourself. Mu Sang thought he must be Yang Man Chik the General of the Western Stronghold. Mu Sang said I am a warrior of the third mercenary group that was dispatched here by the Central Heavenly Alliance. I am the only survivor. The general asked what happened to the descendant of the Northern Heavenly Sect? Mu Sang replied he is most likely dead the last time I saw him. He was trapped in a burning room, however I was unable to check if he escaped or not. The general said we will find out soon, arrest this man for now, we will transfer him and interrogate him. Now divided into two groups, secure the surrounding borders and search R, recover all the bodies that have been burned in the fire. Mu Sang thought when I arrive at the Western Stronghold, they will question me about the appearance of the Silent Knight and how I survived their attack, they will also want to find the truth behind Mu One as well, if I am proven innocent, I will be able to rejoin the Central Heavenly Alliance, if not I will be locked up in prison forever, I must remain focused till the end. Soon, Mr. Huang said even within the Northern Heavenly Sect, not many know about this mountain, this is the Jekam Mountains, but it's most commonly known as the Eerie Mountains, it's a place that's not fit for living. Do you really plan to stay here, young master? Mu One replied yes, it's fine, from now on I will only be training in martial arts, this will be the perfect place for me to completely immerse myself in my training. I am now considered dead to the world, people will have doubts at first, but that will all soon disappear and that's because the people of this world are cruel and heartless. Mr. Huang said young master, I shall bring food and supplies for you every four months. Mu One said I am sincerely thankful for what you do for me because of me you've suffered so much. Mr. Huang replied please don't say such things this is my sacred duty which I must fulfill. Mu One said then please forgive me for saying this, as I know this is selfish of me, but I will continue to be in your care. Then my journey to the top shall begin at this place. White Dragon Merchant Troop, one of the ten great merchant groups in the nation. The strength of their wealth is able to make even the imperial family heed their demands, they have numerous branches spread all throughout the mainlands, and as such holds tremendous amounts of influence over the nation. Even though each branch is large enough to operate on their own, if they had a place they needed to call as their main headquarters, it would have to be in Nanyo, there they have total control over the city. Within Nanyo, everyone knew who the White Dragon Merchant Troop were and it was almost impossible for the White Dragon Merchant Troop to find anyone who had no connections to them. The woman who founded the White Dragon Merchant Troop is the retired former leader, Tay Tay. However for the first time in years, she made an appearance at the summit meeting. This girl is White Dragon Merchant Troop youngest daughter Seo Yin, she thought ever since he was young, he's done everything he could to help my mother build this troop from the ground, he's someone who cares more about the White Dragon Merchant Troop than anyone else and that person is my eldest brother, the person whom my mother entrusted the White Dragon Merchant Troop to, eldest son whom young. It's been a while since the last time my mother made an appearance at a summit meeting, this is pretty unusual of her, something must have happened. Keite said so the situation in Unnam is not looking good correct? Seo Yin wonders it's about Unnam? Seven years ago, when everyone wanted to withdraw from Unnam, since it was too far of a location to manage properly, the person who put everything on the line, in order to establish a foundation in Unnam, was none other than elder brother, Jam Young. Jam Young said if there is an issue there, then I shall be the one to go. Whom Young said no we cannot allow that, mother. If Jam Young leaves his position here to go over to Unnam, then we will inevitably suffer some losses here. I believe it's best that we send someone else over to Unnam. Jam Young said eldest brother Unnam is the place that I established, there won't be anyone else who knows more about there than me, you must send me over there. Whom Young thought it's not like I don't understand how you feel. I also know that you are the most qualified to go there, however we have no idea how difficult the situation over there is, nor do we know what kind of dangers awaits us there, I cannot risk sending my own blood relative to a place such as that. 
but since our mother is here to make sure we make an unbiased decision I must refrain from saying such things. Hey Tay said Jam Young do you really wish to go? Jam Young said I plan to take the deputy guards if I take the deputy general, in Jiel and his men then I am sure we can avoid any difficulties that we may face. Hey Tay said then it should not make a difference if you take one more person with you take bodyguard Huang with you. He is a trustworthy person, in case of emergencies you can use him to contact us. Please take care of yourself, the situation in Annam is not an easy matter. Soon, Tay Tay asked are you worried about him? Whom Young replied yes I am, but not only that I am more worried about the fact that we have no reliable information on what the situation is like on Nam right now. Tay Tay replied I feel the same as you, however just because it's dangerous does not mean the main family should not get involved, if the main family loses their spine, then nobody will respect the white dragon merchant troop. During times like this, it is the duty of the main family to take the initiative and set an example for others. Whom Young said I understand, mother. Afterward, Hum Young thought bodyguard Hu Wang, he's not talented in martial arts, nor does he particularly stand out from others, I am not entirely sure what he did to gain such trust and favor from mother. Mr. Hu Wang told to put more strength, you little brat, stop being so stiff. Hum Young told Mr. Hu Wang that madam looking for him. Kei Tei told Mr. Hu Wang, my third son wishes to head over to Annam, since it's the place he established himself, he feels it's his responsibility to settle the current situation over there. That is why I want bodyguard Huang to go along with him. Seven years ago my eldest son whom Young was able to escape an extremely dangerous situation. Then five years ago I was put into a critical condition but miraculously survived. Looking back on it now, the person who allowed us to safely get through those times were when bodyguard Huang was with us. I believe you have been blessed with great fortune, and have the power to allow people to escape from dangerous situations. I am a firm believer that having good luck is a God-given talent, so please can I entrust Jam Young to you, bodyguard Huang. Soon, Mr. Huang said since we are leaving in half a month, I better hurry, anyhow that little brat Moon Young might follow us during the procession march, and end up getting stabbed by a sword and die, I better train him extra hard so that does not happen. Mr. Huang said due to the heavy presence of bandits in this area, I've heard that the Imperial Army have started to manage this location. But surprisingly enough, no matter how many times I went through this area in the past, I have never encountered a single bandit. I really must have good luck, no wonder Madame No is sending me with her third son. Mr. Huang thought you've already spent seven years here, young master. It has not been a year since I last saw the young master, but he already feels like a brand new person. Even if I Huang Chol died today I won't have any regrets. Mu One said it must have been a difficult journey coming here during this time of the year I'm always thankful for what you do for me, it's cold out here, let's head inside. Mr. Huang said you've changed since I last saw you. Mu One replied I am still lacking quite a bit, I will need to be even more diligent in my training. Anyhow, you came a lot earlier than I expected. Mr. Huang said I came a bit earlier than usual, since I'm getting sent over to Annam on a short notice. Mu One asked did something bad happen? Mr. Huang replied I doubt it's dangerous, besides if something bad happen, I am more than capable of protecting my own body, so there is no need for you to worry. In any case what is that blade over there? Mu One said that it's a blade that I forged using the meteorite you gave me a while back, as I expected, that rock was not normal. It took me several years just to tame it. Mr. Huang said that blade it's giving off quite a sinister vibe. Mu One said we can talk about that, blade later. What's happening in the world right now? Mr. Huang said after incident seven years ago, the politics of this world started to shake, the four pillars of the northern heavens have become a huge presence to the world, and the central heavenly alliance is trying their best to keep them in check. If they are fighting internally, then that means the silent knight still has not made a reappearance. They are still nowhere to be found. Because of this, even the central heavenly alliance is quite perplexed and seems unsettled. Soon, Mr. Huang told Mu One until the world witnesses the glory of the Northern Heavenly Sect once more, this Huang Chul will never get sick nor fall. I shall come back within three months during the spring, please stay healthy until then. Mu One thanked Mr. Huang and wonders Ha Sol where are you now? Three months have passed, Mr. Huang state he would come during the spring, yet two months passed since then and we are well into summer, he still has not come back forgive me Mr. Huang I was being too complacent. He's someone who will never break a promise, Mr. Huang I am positive now something must have happened to him. Mu One destroyed the whole mountain and thought there is no need for me to wait any longer, I must go and find him myself. 
Location Nanyo, Orchid District. The staff seeing Mu One gave so huge amount of gold coins, excited welcome him and said this room is the one that made even the noble families and the white dragon merchant troop covet with desire, it comes with a nice bathtub for you to use as well. Mu One thought I've spent too long in seclusion, my memories of the geographical locations have gotten foggy, I am honestly amazed that I even made it over to Nanyo. It took 10 days to get here it was not an easy task. It was my mistake I was far too complacent, it's not just anyone, it's Mr. Huang, and he is the only person who has been with me the longest. All I know is that he worked as a bodyguard at the White Dragon Merchant Troop, I really don't know much of this world. I would be making excuses if I said that I was too focused on learning martial arts that I was not able to come find him sooner. Forgive me I hope you are still alive. Soon, Mu Wan went to White Dragon Merchant Troop he told the guard my name is Jin, I am here to find a boy named Guak Moon Young. The guard asked how do you know him? Mu Wan replied I don't know him personally, but my uncle told me that he was close with him. The guard asked your uncle? Mu Wan said his name is Huang Chul and he works as a bodyguard here. The guard said are you that nephew of our brother Huang? I've heard a lot about you, brother Huang loved bragging about his nephew. If that's the case, I assume you are here because you want to know the whereabouts of him. It's already been 6 months since we last heard of him. Come with me, I will take you to where Moon Young is. Brother Huang took good care of our Moon Young. Since Moon Young never had any talent in the sword, he's just doing a bunch of odd jobs around here nowadays. Soon, the guard leader said bodyguard Huang's nephew? My name is Gong Jin Sung, I am the captain of the bodyguards here. Mu Wan said I go by Jin, Jin Sung said he should be back any time in any case, are you here because you want to know where bodyguard Huang is? Mu Wan replied that's correct do you perhaps know anything? Jin Sung said well there was an issue in Un Nam and the deputy guards and the third master went over there. I heard that Madam No put in a special request for bodyguard Huang to go along with them as well. Mu Wan said why did Madam No do such a thing? What purpose did she have, sending my uncle into a dangerous mission like that? Not to mention he went missing, why is not she assembling a rescue party for him? Jin Sung said that is quite rude of you, Madam No is not a heartless person, also bodyguard Huang was not the only one who went missing, the third master and the deputy guards all disappeared as well, this is all a big issue within the white dragon merchant troop. That's why Madam No has been recruiting a lot of skilled mercenaries, she's planning to dispatch them soon to Unnam. Up until now, the White Dragon Merchant Troop has been operating on their own and have not been receiving any form of assistance from the Broken Fist Troop, who are the most influential group in Annam. With this incident I heard that we asked for their help and cooperation, and that's the extent of everything that I know regarding this incident. Oh, right, we apparently tried to use quite a few supplies and items to bribe them for their help. Anyhow, you just need to know that Madam No is also desperate and is doing her best to figure this situation out. There's Moon Young I will leave you two to talk, I will need to go and check up on Madam No. Mu One said would it be possible if I can also join the people heading to Unnam? I am willing to work any jobs, as long as I get to Unnam. Jin Sung said you at least look like you know how to wield a blade, I will put in a word for you then. Moon Young then asked Mu One what did you need me for? Jin Sung thought every year, numerous talents flood into the world of Murum. The people in Murum will then select individuals whose talents soar as high as the sky, and elect them into the seven positions known as the seven lower skies. And the man who is right before my eyes was not able to get elected into the seven lower skies. However, his ability to think and analyze was unrivaled within the whole nation what an amazing talent he possesses. Unending with Mu Huan of wise judgment, and then there is her the woman who is able to single-handedly decimate several dozens of powerful men. Unnatural strength Chai Yak Ran. There is a martial sect that is made up of only a dozen wandering mercenaries as they centered themselves around a martial master named Yang Mu. With the right price, these guys are willing to get any job done no matter how difficult it may be, they are known as the Iron Brigade, and the two that are here today are the vice leaders. What tremendous aura they have. Tremendous indeed. Mu Huan said that completes our contract, we have successfully received the White Dragon Merchant Troops request, we shall depart for Unnam first thing tomorrow. Tete said, thank you. Mu Huan said you can thank us again after we've saved Master Yun. Tete asked will it just be the two of you going there? Mu Huan said of course not, not only will it be me and Vice Leader, but we will also be accompanied by the Hunter of the Dying Breath, Arrow of the Setting Sun and the Swordsman of the Seven Ways. It will be the five of us that will depart tomorrow, as for the rest of our Iron Brigade, they have followed our sect leader and are currently on a different mission, 
We plan to reunite with them in Sichuan on our way over to Annam, so there is nothing for you to worry about. Kate said if that's the case I feel slightly less concerned now. Soon, Jin Sung said Madam No and family leader Yoon, the nephew of bodyguard Huang has come here, he's requested that you allow him to go with them to Annam. Kate replied I don't see an issue with that, just let him do as he pleases. Next day, Hum Young asked Seo Yin why the hell are you going to Annam? Seo Yin said it's no use stopping me now, I've already made up my mind. I have studied martial arts at the Gong Dong Monastery, I am more than capable of protecting my own body. Hum Young asked why do you insist on putting yourself in danger? Seo Yin replied because he's family. Soon, Mu Wan wonders I have a feeling nothing will go according to our plan. Moon Young asked did you sleep well? Senior brother I was pretty anxious that I was not able to sleep. Moon Young thought they said he was Mr. Huang's nephew, right? He's a lot different from him, he's calmer and more reserved. Moon Young said this is my first time experiencing a large march, my father was a bodyguard as well, and he passed away a couple years ago during one of his duties like this, that's why I am more nervous than usual. Mr. Huang said that I would be the first to die when something went wrong, so he personally taught me some cultivation techniques, but he also nagged at me quite a bit, and told me to not slack off during my training. Mu Wan replied Mr. Huang did? What was the cultivation technique that Mr. Huang taught you? Moon Young said it was the three foundational cultivation technique. The key aspect of this cultivation technique is that if I'm patient and stick with it till the end, it will help guide me onto the path of becoming a martial master. Even though everyone says that I am talentless and that I should stop learning martial arts, Mr. Huang was the only one who understood my feelings and took extra care of me. I hope he is safe. Mu Wan told him if something were to happen, make sure to stay by my side. Moon Young thought this senior brother, although he's holding a blade, is he actually a strong and dependable person? I mean if something were to happen would not it be safer to stick with the Iron Brigade? Mu Wan thought how should I live my life from now on? I've been living my life solely dedicated towards honing my martial arts and now the only thing I want to do is to find Mr. Huang and Ha Sol as well, but what should I do after I find them? The Northern Heavenly Sect exacting revenge on the Central Heavenly Alliance, is that truly the right path for me to take? Or would it be better if I just continued to live the rest of my life as a non-existent being of this world? I am sure my father would want me to abandon any sense of resentment which I may hold and live a proper life, free from all worries. However, will I really be able to do that, when the blood of my heart boils with rage? Father I really don't know what I should do. Soon, someone said we will cross the river to Anma in about 4 hours. Until then we will split into two groups and take turns resting. The staff asked Mu Wan what can I get you today, Mu Wan replied just something simple and filling would be nice. Mu Wan noticed Moon Young reaction and said are you interested in her? Soon, the staff said the food has been served, my name is So Ryung what is your name older brother? Moon Young then introduced himself, So Ryung said so older brother is a bodyguard as well, that's so cool. If I need someone to protect me later, can I come get you from the white dragon merchant troop? Afterward, Mu Huan said looks like they are ascetics from the Gong Dong Monastery. And that boy right there, he's probably someone with a high status. That's because their monastery usually does not send young disciples to the outside world. The only times that's an exception are if they attained a high mastery in their martial arts, or if they are at least a first generation disciple. Mu Wan asked are you jealous of him? Moon Young replied nope, I am satisfied being a bodyguard. My father once said although we are being paid to do our jobs, our duty is to protect the lives of our owners as well as their precious belongings, because of this, people have tremendous faith in our abilities and can't help but rely on us, since our lives are built on living an honest and humble life. I believe there is no other job more magnificent than this. Suddenly, the ascetics earlier yell get your ass out here, where is the cook, are you ignoring my words? The chef came out and said senior brother? The ascetics throw the food on the chef face and said so it was you Tai Pyung, while eating your food, the future heir of the Gong Dong Monastery, our prodigy Sol Gung got a broken tooth. Is this your way of taking revenge on the great family of the Gong Dong Monastery? The chef said senior brother why are you still like this? I am no longer affiliated with the Gong Dong Monastery. Senior brother are you perhaps still holding a grudge from that day? Exclamation mark five years ago, there was a martial competition that was held every three years, Tate Pyung said that was a good match. I Mu Hei knew that as long as you existed in the Gong Dong Monastery the glorious title known as the highest peak of Gong Dong could never be attained. With you I was fated to always be second. That humiliating defeat, I could never forget it. 
Then a few months later, you were embroiled in some scandal and as a result, your meridians were forcefully destroyed and you were casted out of the Gong Dong Monastery. Mu He wonders however, that humiliating defeat I suffered from you that day, it continues to burn with rage within my heart. Tape Pyung said the only thing that affected you that day was your pride but for me, I was wrongfully framed and eventually lost the ability to practice my martial arts, so despite all of that do you truly need to treat me this way? Let me ask once more did you really break your tooth from eating my food? Sol Gung said then are you saying I am lying to you? Back to earlier, Sol Gung told Mu Hei a few days ago while I was training I tripped over some roots and ended up breaking it. Tae Pyung said the future of the Gong Dong Monastery is looking quite bleak, not even a remnant of Master Tae's teachings and belief are left behind. The fact that you would resort to lies. After listen what he said, Mu Hei immediately launched a palm attack. So Ryun cried and said what you are claiming is false, I was the one who prepared all of the ingredients that's how I know it was impossible for a rock to be in there. Mu Hei said how dare raise your hand against my sacred body and hit on her. Vice Captain Chai was mad but Mu Huan told her calm down, the Gong Dong Monastery is one of the great Fami of the nine great sects. If we become enemies with them, then the Iron Brigade will be put into a difficult situation. Moon Yung stepped in, Mu Hei asked who are you? Moon Yung replied a bodyguard. Mu Hei said a bodyguard? Are you from the White Dragon Merchant Troop? Then are you unaware of the relationship with which we share with the White Dragon Merchant Troop? Moon Yung said will you please bestow your grace and just this once, look past this incident? Mu Hei laughed and said what a chivalrous boy you are, hey kiddo if you phrase it like that, then you are making it sound like we are the bad guys here. How dare a lowly bodyguard? who receives money to exercise their martial arts dare stand before the ascetic of the Gong Dong Monastery. Moon Young replied, the duties of a bodyguard is more than just that, it's an honorable job that holds significant value. Mu Hei said you insolent bastard not only did you stand before me, but you also dare to lecture me? No you place, I shall show you mercy by taking only one of your arms. While Mu Wan stand up, Mu Huan told him please don't be foolish, just hold your anger and look away that boy chose to step in when he knew he should not have, he will unfortunately be punished for his ignorance, and there is nothing we can do to stop it. At very least, he won't lose his life, he should be lucky that only his body and his pride are the only things that gets named from this situation. Mu Wan said he should be lucky that only his body gets maimed, the moment a martial artist loses his arm it signals the end of his life, pride, even dogs have that shit. However, True pride is enduring the hardships of being utterly alone as you do everything you can to fight for your beliefs. That is something that you will never understand. Mu Huan said why are you only looking at the tree and not the forest itself? Do you truly plan to become an enemy of the Gong Dong Monastery with an idiotic belief such as that? Mu Huan said is not that fine? Should not the world have at least one idiot like that? Mu Huan blocked the sword. Mu He thought bare-handed sword block? How dare he block an esteemed martial master's blade with just his fingers? Where did he come from? Who is this bastard? He's not even trembling or flinching at all. Mu Hei asked who are you? How dare you get in my way? Are you also unaware of who I am? Mu Wan said you can consider me as an older brother of this boy, why don't you just stop here for today? Mu Hei said those are not the eyes of someone asking for a favor, and cast palm of the rising clouds. Again Mu Wan simply blocked it and said the duty of a boy is to simply enjoy his life, the duty of a parent is to raise their child, the duty of a merchant is to make profits, the duty of an ascetic is to become pure by purging their worldly desires. Everyone has duties which they must uphold, however it seems you are unable to do something as basic as that, you are a disgrace to all the other ascetics. Mu Wan broke his sword, then another two ascetics attacked towards together. Mu Wan told Moon Young take that girl and her father out of here. Hurry. Mu Wan easily, handle both of them. Mu Hei throw the sword and said I will fucking kill you. Mu Wan continue punch on him and broke the hand Sol Gung who tried to bastard Mu Wan. Mu Huan thought this is bad the members of the Iron Brigade are currently here. If we get involved then the Iron Brigade will no doubt have to face consequences. The people of the Gong Dong Monastery are ones to hold a grudge, we can no longer look past this incident. But if we were to interfere, we will most definitely become an enemy to the Gong Dong Monastery. What a fine mess we are in. Soon, Mu Hei said you dare injure the ascetics of the Gong Dong Monastery, do you think you will be safe after all this? Mu Wan said you are making a threat, but how will you accomplish it? Mu Hei said the entire Gong Dong Monastery shall move, that's the power of the Gong Dong Monastery. Mu Wan said is that so? Mu Hei yelled that's right without knowing that, you dare to attack us? 
Just what kind of a thick-headed idiot are? Mu One told him if that's the case, the Gong Dong Monastery of the Nine Great Shit or whatever, I just need to get rid of them. Mu Hei said you dare to threaten us. Mu One replied why not, am I not allowed to? Suddenly, Seo Yin opened up the door and said I heard that you were here, senior brother Mu Hei, how have you been? She asked Mu One what the hell were you doing? Because of you the relationship between the Gong Dong Monastery and the White Dragon Merchant Troop have deteriorated. Why did you attack the Gong Dong Monastery and the White Dragon Merchant Troop share a close bond with each other? What were you thinking? You should have already been thankful that we even allowed you to come with us to Unnam. Mu One said I apologize for my actions however, should not you first priority be finding out the exact details of this situation as well as checking to see if the people involved are safe? Although he's young he's still a bodyguard for the White Dragon Merchant Troop. Because of that, you have a duty to look after people like him. Not to mention the young girl at the tavern almost lost her life, this boy tried to prevent that and almost lost an arm. Just because the Gong Dong Monastery is held in high regard, does not mean their actions should be justified. I am also aware that Lady Yoon is a disciple of the Gong Dong Monastery. However you should realize the position you are in. You are not here as a disciple of the Gong Dong Monastery. You are here as the leader of the White Dragon Merchant Troop and the person in charge of this journey. That is why I believe it will be wise if you first listen to your people, before you make any kind of a decision. Seo Yin said that was my mistake, forgive me, however the fact that you put them into that state is not a small issue. Mu One said I will take full responsibility for this situation if I was not prepared to do that, I would not have interfered in the first place. Nothing stays forever in this world. Although the Great Gong Dong Monastery holds a strong foundation, they will not exist forever, as stated I will take responsibility for this situation if that does not satisfy you, then Moon Young and I shall leave the White Dragon Merchant Troop and operate on our own. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. Jin Sung said hey now let's settle down, this is not an issue where it can simply be decided like that, let's first get some sleep and try to come with a solution tomorrow. Seo Yin said fine we will do as you say. Jin Sung said as for you young man, what are your plans for now? As stated by the young miss, this is not a small issue. Mu Won said I shall be waiting for them. Soon, Moon Young said I am sorry because of me. Mu Won said don't worry it seems we will have to spend the night out here, can you gather some materials that we can use for our bedding? Moon Huan said it's my turn to talk to you. Mu Won said soap let me take a break, I am tired from all the talking I've had to do. Moon Huan said but I still have not had the chance to explain everything to you, please just give me a moment, if you acted in a cooperative manner, then the present situation would have been more favorable than the one we are in right now. Mu Wen asked do you always calculate all of your actions? Mu Huan said of course that's the only way you can survive in this treacherous world of Murim, you need to move based on your strengths and weaknesses. Mu Wen replied, I see, don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, the people of this world generally think like that. But I believe there are times when you should listen to your heart more than the mind, today was an example of that for me, Everyone believes that compassion and kindness has disappeared from this world, and that's because the people with power will continue to take away things from the weak and the weak will have nowhere to cry nor complain to. In a world as cruel as this, if the people who have learned martial arts also start to abuse their power, then what's the point in being a martial artist? Mu Huan thought this man he's dangerous, he's extremely dangerous, his beliefs will become a great threat to the entire world of Murim. Mu Huan said a single person cannot change the whole world the world is not as forgiving nor easy as you think. Mu Wan replied is that so? But you see, even a single candle has the ability to illuminate the darkness. So at the very least, I can become the light that guides the people who can and that is the reason why I've learned martial arts and why I must continue to take this path. Soon, Mu Yung said this is all my fault, if only I did not step in. Mu Wan said your mistake was not taking your weakness into consideration anyone can get into trouble. What's important is how well you can clean up the situation you are in, I am sure you are aware of it already, but the world of Murim is a cold and unforgiving place, you just need to get stronger. But on the bright side, you were able to save the lives of two peoples, you should be proud that you even had the courage to stand up against them. You did the right thing. Mu Yung said, thank you I will make sure to keep what you said in mind. Can I ask you something? What kind of training do I need to do to become as strong as you, and be able to break a blade with just my fingers? Mu One said you are referring to the shattering finger, technique, well I've learned how to blacksmith ever since I was young, because of that I learned how to forge swords. Mu Yung replied really? Then that blade you are holding did you make that as well? 
Mu once said yeah, then one day after spending countless hours forging swords, I was able to see the faults within a sword, although that won't be the case with fine blades forged by master blacksmiths. Mu one thought Mr. Huang the rock you give me just what kind of rock is it? It's been two years and it still won't listen to me. Just when will you accept me you persistent bastard, please let me succeed this time. Did it work? Have the last two years of my labor finally paid off? No wait the edge is still dull, no matter how many times I try to sharpen it, only my whetstone is being grinded away, so you plan to stay stubborn till the end. I see how it is you want to see which one of us will last the longest. I've decided I shall name you Snowflower, the blade I forged was not a divine blade or a demonic blade, was a bewitched blade. Afterward, Vice Captain Chai passed some foods to Mu Wan. While they are enjoying food, Mu Wan noticed something and told Moon Young head back to the Southern Sea Tavern. Hurry! Gong Dong Monastery's eldest brother Mu Guang asked where are you from? Mu Wan replied I am just a swordsman from the north. Mu Guang said quite the arrogance you have, I heard that you persecuted the disciples of the Gong Dong Monastery, is that the truth? Mu Wan said I was not persecuting anyone, however, you brothers were. It seems you are the one who still has not heard the truth. Mu Huan said please don't listen to his words, eldest brother he's a crafty bastard. Mu Guang said arrogant swordsman of the north, you dare lie to me and taint the honor of the Gong Dong Monastery, not only that but you dare disgrace the names of our ascetics and destroy the sacred blades of the Gong Dong Monastery? For putting my brothers in this state, I shall punish you accordingly. Mu Wan said if you were already planning to do so, when what's with the talk? Let's hurry and begin. Mu He said please don't listen to his words, eldest brother he's a crafty bastard. Mu Guang said arrogant swordsman of the north, you dare lie to me and taint the honor of the Gong Dong Monastery, not only that but you dare disgrace the names of our ascetics and destroy the sacred blades of the Gong Dong Monastery? For putting my brothers in this state, I shall punish you accordingly. Mu Wan said if you were already planning to do so, when what's with the talk? Let's hurry and begin. Mu Wan instantly took down most of them. Mu Guang thought just the simple draw of his blade was able to create wind pressure that's strong enough to blow away all of the first generation disciples? A monastery said I got you now bastard, but then Mu Wan launched shattering fingers broke his sword and cast a powerful blow. Mu Guang wonders he's only using the sheath of his blade? He's only knocking them out, he's not even looking to kill them, he's a martial master. Mu Huan said that bastard is trying to destroy the Gong Dong monastery kill him, attack him with everything that you've got. Mu Guang try to stop them but it's too late. Mu Guang said he's just toying with us. Do you think I would not recognize a fellow martial master? However, that's as far as you will get, I won't drag this out any longer, I will finish this with one blow. Mu Guang cast five element spread of destruction. Then he noticed, Mu Wan dodged it. Meanwhile, Seo Yin said how is that possible? His opponent are not just anyone, they are the first generation disciples of the Gong Dong Monastery, who are one of the great sects of the Just Faction, even when all of them are attacking him, they can't even brush the seams of his clothes. He's just blowing them away like a gust of wind would do with fallen leaves. Jin Sung said in the world of Murim, there are individuals who hide their true strengths, they are known as the respected beings. Truly powerful martial artists center their beliefs around the pains of the world and seek to resemble the common people. That's why Madame No has always paid closer attention to the people who never stood out. Seo Yin said what is that man's true identity? Jin Sung said he said he was Huang Chul's nephew, where did bodyguard Huang come from again? Mu Huan said it seems he is set on destroying the Gong Dong Monastery on his own. Vice Captain Chai Yak Ran said for a long time those bastards became drunk on the fame of their family and not for their own merits, that is why they will never be a match for that man, it's vexing, but we are still no match for them, only our leader will be able to handle them. Mu Huan thought even that prideful senior sister is showing respect for that man, the leader we need to hurry and regroup with him. Back to battle, Mu Guang thought you bastard you dare toy with me? He's merely blocking my attacks, he's not even taking this match seriously. Mu Guang madly said you bastard, fight me with everything that you've got. Mu Wan said everything that I've got? Forgive me, it seems I've been disrespectful, it's been a while since I've had a real match with someone. Then allow me to show you my full strength. Mu Wan launched Shadowed Blade of the End, Spirit of the Fallen Star. Next moment, Mu Wan's blade already hang on Mu Guang's neck, Tae Pyung came over and said please don't kill him, Sir Swordsman. Then Mu Guang only noticed Tae Pyung, soon, Mu Guang said I see so that's what happened. Mu Guang said so during the time I went into isolated training, 
your meridians were forcefully destroyed and were casted out of the Gong Dong Monastery. As if you guys were not satisfied with that, you were shameful enough to resort to these underhanded methods. Tape Young back then, they told me you ended up killing so many of our brothers because you suffered from Qi deviation and became consumed by demonic Qi. That was why you were forcefully removed from the monastery. Now it all makes sense. I did think it was quite weird at the time. I had a time believing that the man who earned the title highest peak of Gong Dong and the person whom I called my brother, would resort to such things, a part of me knew that made no sense. But forgive me I simple accepted that fact and moved on I became complacent and believed you chose that path in order to become stronger. How ignorant I am, for letting all of this to happen but Tae Pyung, why did not you say anything about this matter? You could have gone and talked to Master Tay, or explained your circumstances to the sect elders. You could have sought me out as well, even if I was in my isolated training, with the power you had, you could have done at least one of those things. Tae Pyung said I was simply tired of it all. My position within the monastery made me exhausted. As I became more and more respected, I started to realize just how many people harbored resentment and envy towards me, my life at the monastery became miserable as I became utterly alone. However, during this time I met my wife who never ceased to support me and always stayed by my side, that's when I realized that there was no point in me staying at the monastery any longer. I decided I would give up everything if it meant that I could enjoy a peaceful life with my wife and daughter. But in the end they still refused to leave me alone, I don't know what else I need to do. Sol Gung said eldest brother I did nothing wrong, I never intended to harm that man or his family all of this was planned by senior brother Mu Hei and I was forced to obey him. There was nothing I could do to refuse him, eldest brother, please trust me. Mu Hei said now that everything is out, then let me have a say in this matter, eldest brother Mu Guang, you are an ignorant bastard who's drunk on martial arts, you want to become a strong martial artist? That's fine however, that's all you fucking care about, you have no other interest in what's going on around you, you know nothing about the inner workings our sect. It's pathetic how you don't know anything at all, but since I will never be able to catch up to you in terms of martial arts, it's inevitable that you will become the next sect leader, Tate Pyung when I heard he was a candidate to become the next sect leader, I could not fucking stand, that's why I did everything I can to get rid of him so that you at least could become the next sect leader. You have no idea how much I've done for you? and this is how you treat me? I spent decades sacrificing everything I had just for your sake. For everything that I've done becoming a first generation disciple is a given, becoming a sect elder is also something I should be entitled to. I did nothing wrong, this is what you are supposed to do in order to achieve success, so stop acting like you are a righteous human being, eldest brother. Mu Guang stunned for a second and start laughing. Mu Guang said how rotten the Gong Dong monastery has become. You are absolutely right, it seems I know nothing aside from martial arts, I was merely a puppet to this entire charade. You have no idea how much I want to chop your head off this instant, but that would be a blessing for someone like you, you will suffer the same fate as Tae Pyung and have your meridians forcefully destroyed, not only that, but I will make sure your life becomes twice as miserable as his, starting today, I shall eradicate all of the rotten bastards within the Gong Dong monastery, anyone who dare oppose me shall be ripped apart and I will devour you until there is nothing left behind. So I am warning you now, you little shits. Be prepared to face your consequences. Mu Guang told Tae Pyung, after all that's happened to you, a simple apology will not be enough. From now on, the Gong Dong Monastery will do whatever we can to assist you and your family. Mu Guang said it's all my fault I what ignorant and foolish. As the representative of the Gong Dong Monastery, I humbly apologize for all that you had to suffer. Tae Pyung replied there's no need for you to be like this, your words have been enough. Mu Guang said no I promise I will do everything in my power to make this right, forgive me for not doing this any sooner. Mu Guang thought in order to become a splendid martial master, I put my entire life towards that task, but that young man, who does not seem to be any older than mid-twenties, I was no match for him. Is he a natural prodigy? The heavens are quite unfair, indeed. After witnessing the seven lower skies, I can't believe there are still people like him, he might even have the potential to rise to the top of this world. Mu Guang told Mu One I've heard everything regarding this situation, I believe you are headed to Un Nam, correct? Because of us, it seems you've wasted a day at this place. But it was thanks to you, that I was enlightened on the corrupt nature of our Gong Dong Monastery, for all that you've done for us, allow me to introduce you to someone who may be of assistance to you. Once you arrive at the province of Unnam go and look for the three-minded scholar Jin Wool, he's a long-time friend of mine, he stands out quite a bit, 
so it should not be too difficult tracking him down, if you mention my name to him, then he will most definitely help you out. Mu Wan replied, thank you, but why are you doing this? Mu Guang said well, not only did I become indebted to you, but, I have a gut feeling that you need to meet this man. Mu Wan said I Jin Mu Wan apologize for the severe lack of respect I've shown you thus far. After Mu Wan left, Mu Guang wonders Jin Mu Wan a swordsman from the north, wait, that's impossible that can't be him, right? Soon, Mu Wan thought since I've shown the extent of my capabilities, they are starting to become wary of me, was I too impatient, things are going to become troublesome. Afterward, Mu Wan told Moon Young you are going to pierce me with those eyes. Moon Young said I respect you so much, you are so cool, how are you so good at martial arts? I never knew you were that amazing, what do I need to do to become as strong as you, senior brother? Mu Wan said this is tiring, I should not have interfered. Moon Young, the three foundational cultivation technique, that Mr. Huang taught you, it's not your average cultivation technique. Although it may seem worse than the average cultivation techniques, since it starts off slow, but once you attain a certain realm stage, the speed of your progress will significantly increase, just don't be impatient and make sure to thoroughly master it and I have some advice for you as well, you should probably use a heavier sword, don't use the lighter swords that are used by the white dragon merchant troop, use a long sword that is four times the weight of the sword you have right now, looking at your physique, I can tell your body has the potential to become bigger and stronger with enough training, therefore, a heavier long sword is better for you, soon, location province of Sachan. Mu Huan said we will stop here for today, we will be resting at one of the taverns nearby, you will take turns guarding the carriages, when you are off duty, make sure to rest up properly. Soon, Mu Wan brought Moon Young over market to choose a sword, but whenever Moon Young asked Mu Wan about the sword, Mu Wan shaked his head. Moon Young said senior brother I am thankful that you are taking your time to come look at swords with me but you've been refusing every single one of them, wait why are you heading towards that alley? is there something good over there? Then an equipment shop owner asked are you looking for a sword, you make that sword yourself? But why a bewitched blade of all things? Mu Wan asked how did you know that I made it? The owner said I can tell just by looking at your hands, those are the hands that have done some smithing. Mu Wan said it was not intentional. This blade became sinister by itself. It's probably because of the material I used. This material I used for this blade was a rock that a certain tribe used to worship as a sacred object but that tribe became massacred I believe that's when sinister will and desire of those people. The owner said but you know, there's something called the weapons of the gods, they are made from the will and desire of a master blacksmith, depending on who that person is, it can become a divine weapon or a demonic weapon as well. That's why master blacksmiths who forge anything must always be cautious when making their weapons. If anyone else had that blade, they would have been in a load of trouble, make sure to have that blade in your hand at all times, be careful as well one mistake, and you can lose your mind and be consumed by that blade. Mu Wan said I am already aware of that. Then the owner said come and you already have the skills to be a master blacksmith, so there's no way you here for a sword yourself, you looking for a sword for that kiddo over there? Mu Wan said that's correct, I am looking for a long sword for this boy, at the very least, the weight has to be about 4 2400 gram and the length should be about 90 centimeters. The cultivation technique that this boy is learning will make good use of a long sword that will allow him to learn the sword of domination. The store owner said I forgot I had this bastard. This is a sword I made when I was young with a lot energy. I poured my heart and soul into making it. But since it's real heavy nobody wanted him. I am not strong as before. Young man come over here and get it for me. Mu One said judging by the faint glow of red it's giving off you must have used a hematite ore, this is an incredible sword, the weight is perfectly balanced, I like it, it's very well forged. The owner said kiddo, come hold him for yourself. Moon Young thought alright, since I am born with a physique that can wield a longsword, let's give this a try. Next second, Moon Young thought what the hell, why is it so heavy, senior brother was able to easily hold it with one hand. Store owner said kids these days are a whole bunch weaklings, you know, when I was at his age, that was like nothing. Moon Young said it's not what you think I only dropped it because senior brother let go when I was not ready for it, I am not dropping it now. Mu Wan said well just think of it as a part of your training. How much is it? Moon Young replied no senior brother I will pay. The owner said it's fine for coming to this raggedy rundown forge, it's my show of thanks for entertaining this old one for a bit. If you really want to repay me then but this old man a drink next time you come. I can tell you faced a lot hardships of life already, bewitched blade, 
With you I can spend all night drinking and talking about a lot things, especially swords, I believe we can talk a long long time about it. Mu Won said, thank you very much, I will make sure to come again. Soon, Moon Young said I am seriously thankful for what you've done for me today, it's thanks to you that I acquired Red Tooth. That senior blacksmith said that was the name for this sword. Afterward, they noticed many people gathering there, Moon Young saw a three young warrior bullying old man and lady. Then a man stepped in and said god damn it, anywhere you go, there's always bastards like them, I can't believe everyone is gathered here to watch this happen, Blue Hill sect, Mount Peak sect, ruling family of Sachun, where the hell are these bastards? Can they not see an elder couple being assaulted by these bastards? With three great families dwell in the province of Sachun, why are not they doing anything about this? The man simply took down three of them. Mu One said looks like he's handling the situation, let's head back. Soon, when they back to in, Mu Huan said welcome back leader, Moon Young said what is he talking about? Then the man earlier appeared and said glad to see you guys again, hope you all had a safe trip. This man is leader of the Iron Brigade, Yang Mu Sung. Soon, Mu Huan told Mu Sung about the story happened recently few days. Mu Sung said really? That happened to you guys? That's impressive good work, vice leader. Mu Sung greeted to Mu Huan and said I heard that your personality was piss awful. According to my vice leader, he had an extremely hard time dealing with you. Mu Sung said it's good that you are here, we were just about to have our meeting, come sit with us. Seo Yin said but leader Yang. Mu Sung interrupted and said the person in charge of this journey for the white dragon merchant troop is lady Seo Yin, I heard that his uncle went missing as well. If that's the case, he is as much right as any of us here to participating in this meeting. Jin Sung said but these are important executive matters, Mu Sung said did not you guys say this man is strong as hell? What's with the fuss? Should not he be a nice addition for us? Anyhow, let's just forget about the small details. We are in a situation where anyone with power will be of significance for us, no need to be picky, just be glad we at least have something, besides, strong bastards are always the best. Soon, Mu Sung said now first things first, you already know the people who accompanied you from the city of Nanju, in the province of Gansu, so allow me to introduce you to the others you have not met yet. Starting with that guy over there, his name is Shredder. That guy is Seo Jin, and that guy is Sung Yul. Mu One said greetings I go by Jin. Mu Sung said now that we've finished introducing each other, let's continue with the meeting. Mu Sung thought it's just as my vice leader said, I can't sense any chi from him. It's as if he does not even have one in the first place. So you are planning to hide your skills till the end, he's definitely not your usual bastard. Jin Sung said allow me to repeat what we've been discussing with the vice leaders, first the situation in unname is quite complex. As you all know, asides from the deep blue sword sect, there are not many reputable sects within the province of unname. That was why the broken fists were able to easily take over and settle down in unnam. They were able to establish a large sect and were able to become one of the biggest influences over unnam. Because of this they are at constant war with the deep blue sword sect, under normal circumstances, the central heavenly alliance should be mediating these disputes, but for whatever reason, they are choosing to remain as bystanders, that is why the situation in the province of Unnam is getting worse with each passing day. Jin Sung said due to these reason, not only are the white dragon merchant troop being affected, but numerous other merchants as well, that is why we sent a large sum of money to the broken fists, in order to ask for their cooperation in the past but that's besides the point. All of this is causing a lot of merchants to be hesitant to enter into the province of Unnam and their economy has been completely ruined. Mu Sang said it seems someone is trying to stop the circulation of money, within the province of Unnam. Mu Huan said I highly suspect it's both the deep blue sword sect and the broken fists. Mu Sang said what if a third party is involved? Yak Ran said we can't exclude that possibility, however that's something we can't prove either. Mu Sang said how troublesome, you guys sure got us some nasty work this time. Mu One said in the end this entire situation as well as my uncle's disappearance, I am sure all of that can be answered once we arrive at the province of Unnam. Mu Huan said I am sure sooner or later we will have to directly confront these issues ourselves, but I've already sent a spy to gather some information for us beforehand. By the time we arrive at the province of Unnam, I am sure he will have quite a bit of information in store for us. Mu Sang said I was wondering where Tracker was, so you guys already dispatched him? Yak Ran said Mu Huan was the one who sent him and that's because that slacker would never be useful to us in combat. Mu Sang said good work, well alright then, 
then I will leave my vice leaders to finish up this meeting, just make sure to report the final decisions to me, now that I have a basic understanding of the situation, I will try to figure something out on my end as well, this is the cue for me to leave, then he asked Mew when are you planning to stay here, why don't we go for a walk, soon, Mew Sang told Mew one vice leader Mew Huan he's real thinker, that's why he's in charge of all the inner workings of the Iron Brigade, and that's because I trust him. He understands that depending on his actions, the future of the Iron Brigade resides in his hands, he has a deep sense of responsibility because of the heavy burden he has to shoulder, that's why he lives his life calculating all of his actions, which makes it hard for him to learn when to draw the line between certain matters. But it's understandable, since anyone can become like that when they are faced with more and more responsibilities, so I hope you can be a bit more understanding of where that man is coming from, and not just think he's a hard-headed bastard. Mew once said why are you leading me towards a dead end? Mew Sang said don't worry about it, it's not like I'm planning to kill you. Mew one asked do you really think you are even capable of doing so? Mew Sang said that is something I can find out after we trade some blows. When they released the chi, Mew Sang stopped and said it's unfortunate but we will have to save this for some other time, there's something even more important we have to do right now. We need to first gather some information regarding the situation in the province of Annam. The old man said we are closed for today. Mu Sang said I am the Iron Brigade's leader, Mu Sang. The Black Moonlight. Then the old man said please come in. Please wait here for a moment. Mu Sang told Mu One this is one of the branches of the Black Moon, the person we are about to meet might even be the branch leader of the entire organization. This place provides valuable information to martial artists who are at least the same rank as them. That's why it's extremely important hard for normal people to even get in contact with them. Mu One asked but why did you bring me here? Mu Sang said I just wanted to let you know about this place, you should always keep in mind that places like this exist in the world of Murim and that's because the world of Murim, is much bigger and more mysterious than you would like to think. Mu One thought there's more to this world than meets the eye, is he telling me to be careful with how I behave? Mu One said Leader Yang's advice, I will make sure to keep that in mind. Mu Sang said I pray you do. Then a girl said I apologize for the wait, it is pleasure to meet you, Leader Yang of the Iron Brigade. Black Moon their origin was a mystery and nothing was known about who their master was, the purpose of their creation, as well as how many members they had were also unknown. They were an organization that was shrouded in darkness, however one thing for certain was that they had the ability to procure any type of information and were able to do so before anyone else. The girl said I am the Sichun branch leader of the Black Moon, Wu Ryong. Wu Ryong asked who might this be? Mu Sang said he's an acquaintance of mine, and said he is Jin. Wu Ryong said if you are associated with Leader Yang, then you must be an incredible individual, it is an honor to meet you Master Jin, please have a seat. What information do you seek today? Mu Sang asked I want to know more about the situation in the province of Annam. It does not have to be big, so just tell me anything you know. Wu Ryong said that's one of the places we've been paying close attention to, as of late, but unfortunately we have not been able to gather as much information as we'd like, however what's certain is that the dispute between the Broken Fists and the Deep Blue Sword sect is currently being orchestrated by a third party. Mu Sang said just as I thought, then the merchants who went missing in the province of Annam, it's quite possible they are being detained or have been killed by this third party. Wu Ryong said if they were killed, then their bodies would have been discovered by now, it's impossible for them to dispose of a large merchant group without leaving any trace behind. Mu Sang said were you able to find out who this third party is? Wu Ryong said as stated earlier, we have not been able to gather much information regarding the situation in the province of Annam, if you came at a later time, it's possible that we might have found some sort of clue, but it seems you've come a little too early, Leader Yang. Mu Sang said I've heard that the Central Heavenly Alliance has been doing nothing to mediate this issue, is that correct? Wu Ryong said actually, we were informed that the Central Heavenly Alliance has indeed dispatched a group of inspectors quite recently. Mu Sang said that makes sense, there's no way those bastards would sit still and watch on. It seems we are in for a world of trouble this time. We are probably going to lose more than what we can gain, whatever let's head back. Wu Ryong said for the amount you have paid. It seems we've been paid a bit too much for the amount of information we've provided, in order for it to be a fair exchange allow me to tell you one more piece of information. A man by the name of Nung Won Pyung is seeking to harm you and your group, he's been going around looking to hire skilled assassins. After they left, Wu Ryong said Elder Black once that man steps foot into the province of Annam, have the hidden moons follow him. 
The elder said yes, I shall make sure they are to follow leader Yang, Wu Ryong said no, not am I am talking about that man who goes by the name of Jin. Dispatch the hidden moons of the heavens rank. The elder said the man who was next to leader Yang, for someone like him, you want to dispatch the hidden moons? The elder thought not only that, but the most talented and smallest division of the hidden moons, the heavens rank division, does he hold that much worth? The elder said I humbly accept your order and I shall inform the hidden moons to send the heavens rank division to follow the man named Jin. Wu Ryong said that man he definitely has something important. Soon, Mu Sang said so a third party is involved. Mu Wan said at our meeting from earlier, did not you already assume a third party might be involved? Mu Sang said a simple speculation is different from a confirmation. You might think that piece of information does not hold much of a value, but that small confirmation of the existence of a third party will change the potential of a threat into becoming a real danger for the party. In any case, I have another troublesome matter to deal with. That old geezer, Wen Pyeong, he's someone who holds a high status in the province of Sichun, and he was the one who commissioned me just before I met your group, I was tasked with protecting his journey from the province of Chunghae's Salt Marsh Basin all the way back to the province of Sichuan and all I know is that he found some sort of treasure at the Salt Marsh Basin, I honestly did not care nor had any interest in it, but he asked me to keep it a secret and even made me take a vow of silence, but it seems he still does not completely trust us, well that's to be expected since he's an old greedy bastard, Mu Sang said but how dare he issue a death warrant for us, no need to worry, I will make sure nothing happens to us on our journey to the province of Unnam. You should head back to the tavern now, I still have some work I need to do. Soon, Mu Wan thought the Iron Brigade? Where are they going at this hour? Next day, Moon Young wonders the Iron Brigade, what were they doing last night? That they are all asleep right now? A man from White Dragon Merchant said did you hear the news? When I went to the market this morning, I heard that last night, Lord Nung, who is a prominent figure in the province of Sichun had some rowdy bastards raid his residence and ended up killing not only him, but all of his guards and workers as well, apparently it was a massacre. That's why the Imperial Army was dispatched this morning, in order to catch the people behind this incident. Mu Wan asked Mu Sang did you really need to massacre them? Even the innocent people who worked for Nung Wan Pyeong. Mu Sang said when a grass is uprooted, if you don't properly rip out all of its roots, come spring and the sprouts will emerge once more. You must learn to numb your senses to the pains of others, when even the smallest threat can become detrimental to your people. Mu Wan asked are those the beliefs of the Iron Brigade? Is that the type of reputation you've been garnering? Mu Sang said there's no need for you to be this way, you see at one point in my life, I had a phase where my passion for justice burned as brightly as yours, so it's not like I don't understand where you are coming from. Besides it was Wan Pyeong who did not trust us, and was planning to kill us first, even though I may have initiated the draw of blood, none of that matters. I am in a position where I need to prioritize the lives of my subordinates, if I did not strike first, then we would have been the ones who got hit, it's unfortunate, but that's the shitty reality of the world of Murim. I get a feeling you are quite familiar with this truth. Mu Wan said no you are just a coward. Afterward, when they arrived, Mu Sang reminds don't let your guard down. Then Mu Wan noticed someone is running towards them. Tang family of the mountain slope, one of the most famous towns in the whole country. This place is where the Tang clan resides and practice their poison arts and assassination. Equivocally, the Tang family of the mountain slope is also known as the Tang family of Sichuan and the esteemed Tang families as well. Back to early, this old man is Tang family head emperor of 10,000 poisons Tang Jian Wu. He asked if you finished your preparations? This man is Tang Jian Wu's nephew possessor of 10,000 poisons, Tang Gi Moon. Gi Moon said no need to worry about us, there was not much for us to prepare in the first place. Those shitty bastards of the Central Heavenly Alliance, how dare they call us back and forth as if we are their dogs. Then again when it comes to issues regarding poison, there's no one better than us to ask. Jian Wu said this time, the request for our help from the Central Heavenly Alliance does not sit too well with me, if you feel like the situation is heading towards a dangerous path, do whatever it takes to pull out from there. You must prioritize the lives of our people, make sure to take good care of your uncle, who has no knowledge regarding martial arts. Do you understand me Rieo? Mi Rieo is Jian Wu's granddaughter. Mi Rieo said yes I understand, please don't worry so much, family head. Jian Wu said then I shall pray for safe travel. Mi Rieo thought there goes my uncle studying different types of poison as usual. What a persistent man, in any case the situation regarding the province of unname it seems everyone's on edge. 
I will need to stay on guard. Suddenly, they being ambushed. Mi Rieo covered Gi Moon and killed one of the assassin. After they equip mask, then they start using poison attacks. Mi Rieo felt weird and wonders they are still chasing us even after a direct hit of that poison, they are being used as the weapons of murder, and they don't seem to care about their lives. Gi Moon thought even though I don't know any martial arts. If you come within the range of my poison, it will prove to be more fatal than any type of martial arts. Take that, there's more where that came from. Mi Rieo reminds, behind you uncle. Gi Moon unable dodge and being attacked, Mi Rieo immediately carry Gi Moon to run away while other Tang's member try to buy some time. Back to present, they are running towards them. Mu Huan said stop right there, state your identity. Mi Rieo said we are from the Tang family, I am Mi Rieo and this is my uncle, we were ambushed and he's been critically injured, please help us. We will make sure to return this favor. Mu Sang thought the Tang family, are they also involved in this situation? But not only that the ambushers were able to put the great Tang family into that state, then that means they are not your usual bastards, if they chased all the way over here, then that means those ambushers are nearby, this is going to be troublesome. Mu Sang told Vice Captain take some of the guys with you and check out that area over there. Mu Huan thought the Tang family not only do they return their favor, but they do so by a hundredfold, there's no one else better than the Tang family when it comes to returning favors what should I do? Should we help out the Tang family and become their allies, and risk being put into a dangerous predicament or should we just focus on our original task of finding he third young master of the White Dragon Merchant Troop and just ignore the Tang family? Wait how do we know for certain that these people are indeed from the Tang family? Wait if they are from the third party involved in the province of Unnam and they were sent here to lead us into a trap? Mu Wan saved them and said come with me. Mu Huan said what the hell are you doing? It's just like last time stop acting on your own accord, I am the one in charge of making decision for this journey. Mu One said we are already surrounded, so if you want to live, get your ass ready for battle. Mu Sang said he's right, we are already surrounded. Quite a few of them at that. Mu Sung thought Mu Huan you took too long to make your decision, I should not have put him in charge of everything for this mission. It's not like I was any better in the first place, I was an idiot, I was too focused on the current situation that I did not even realize we were surrounded, if I knew that beforehand, then providing aid or ignoring them would not have mattered. A fight with these bastards was unavoidable. If that's the case, the correct decision was for us, the Iron Brigade to quickly take the initiative and assist the Tang family. Then does that mean Jin was already aware of our current predicament? Mu One told Moon Young make some space for this man. Make sure to stay on guard, because you will be protecting this carriage, you can do that, right? Besides, there's no better training than fighting in a real battle. Moon Young said stop scaring me like that, senior brother. The leader of the ambusher said so you are the bastards who took my prey, while I am asking nicely, why don't you guys hand those poison frogs over to me? Mu One said if we were planning to do that, then there was no reason for us to bring them into our carriage, correct? The leader said what a sharp-witted bastard you are, that's right, even if you handed them over to us, we would have still killed you guys. Crimson Ghosts kill them all. As the battle go on, Jang Yil Vice Captain of the Crimson Ghosts said is there no one who can match with me? Mu Sung launched a powerful blow. Mu Sung wonders I could take him out with that attack but he was able to block it. He said he was from the Crimson Ghosts, that's the first time I've heard of them. These bastards they are not from the mainland. His armor is thicker than I thought. I need to aim for his neck but first I will need to stop him from using that iron mace of his. Mu Sung cast Blade of the Dragon Scale and said I will need to keep one of these bastards alive so that we can question them later but they are all just running at us without any regard for their life. It seems I will need to kill the leader of theirs. Next second, he noticed Jang you'll haven't died and stand up. Back to Mu One, the leader said even before we got here you were already aware of our ambush, right you're quite impressive. Mu One said the disappearance of the White Dragon Merchant Troop, as well as the ongoing situation in the province on Nam, are you guys the one behind all of this? The leader said I am merely a tool used for killing and capturing people. There's someone else who is drawing the bigger picture here. Mu One said then tell me who is that person? The leader thought I cannot sense this chi, but he's skilled enough to locate us from afar. He's also able to stand against a martial master like me and be able to put me on guard. The leader said if you are that curious then the general of the Crimson Ghosts Nam Gun Wai. You will need to first cut me down. Gunwai said I will tell you everything if you are able to cut me down, so why the fuck are you not fighting me with everything that you've got? Show me what you are hiding, I can tell it's quite sinister. 
Gunwai then noticed Mu Wan's speed getting fast until he unable to react. Gunwai madly said I will fight you with everything that I've got. Flaming Spear of the Fire Dragon. I can't believe I went this far for some nameless bastard, to think I'd resort to using the this technique this early. Suddenly, he noticed Mu Wan jump on Sky dodge the attack. Mu Wan said these clothes were a gift from Mr. Huang. Mu Wan cast a powerful blow broke Gun Wai's armor. Gun Wai said who the hell are you? Where the fuck did you come from? Meanwhile, Mi Rieo said uncle it seems an incredible person is helping us, so please hold on for a bit longer. Moon Young said shit I'm going crazy right now, my heart's beating so fast, please I hope nobody comes over here. Moon Young getting nervous when an enemy noticed him and heading towards. Moon Young thought my leg please move, please move, this entire time on our journey, I've been getting trained by senior brother, he even helped me during his break times, I have not even properly swung my sword yet. Am I really going to stay frozen like this? How are you going to protect anyone? Moon Young. The enemy dodged Moon Young attacks, but me Rieo Shuriken killed enemy and said I will provide you with backup, so don't worry so much. Back to Mu One, Goon Wai wonders even that person would have never guessed a man like him existed. If we leave him alive, he's bound to become an enormous threat for us. I will need to kill him. Again Goon Wai cast his ultimate technique Flight of the Crazed Dragon. Then he wonders what the hell? He was able to catch the technique with his bare hands? Mu One broke the spear and said so how much more should I cut down? You should start talking. Goon Wai said wait you still have not cut me down, it's not the end. Mu One stabbed the broken spear into his arm and said next is your neck, hurry and talk. Goon Wai said that's right I remember you were right we were the ones who made the white dragon merchant troop disappear. Meanwhile, Mu Sung cast triumphant fangs of the fire dragon killed their vice captain and said I was trying to go easy on you. What a persistent bastard. Suddenly, Mu Sung noticed it's a poison bomb and immediately reminds other there's a poison bomb. Mu One also noticed a poison touch then the leader escaped. Mu One thought I can't let him go, there he is, he went further than I expected I should be able to catch up to him. Mu One noticed two archers and said just answer my questions and we can avoid any unnecessary bloodshed. But then both of them hug on Mu One prepared a suicide. Mu One escaped and wonders they blew themselves up. And what are they mean by the beginning of the end, Mr. Huang I really hope you are safe, I have to hurry and find him. I was not able to find out anything in the end, I should head back for now. Soon, Mu Sung said what a shitty start to our first day in the province of Annam, let's go, it's time for us to resolve our issues. Jian Wu said so you guys are the Iron Brigade, nice to meet you, I am the Tang family's possessor of 10,000 poisons, Gi Moon. Gi Moon said it seems we've caused quite a bit of trouble for you guys, I apologize as for reward, I will make sure to repay the white dragon merchant troop by tenfold. My niece told me what the two of you did, your actions, I won't ever forget it. Mu Huan said I apologize, it was due to my incompetence that we were not able to help immediately. Gi Moon said what's there to be sorry for? It's understandable as that is the true nature of this world. Mu Sung said Elder Tang, if we knew that you were from the great Tang family, we would not have hesitated to put our lives on the line to assist you. We just were not sure if the situation was something the Iron Brigade should get involved in. Gi Moon said it seems you guys are the type to value a person's life based on their status. Mu Sung said well, of course, it's just like you said, that's the true nature of this world. Gi Moon laughed and said you are absolutely right, that is indeed how this world functions. It seems I Tang Gi Moon, have learned a valuable lesson from you today, I thank you for your lesson. I won't ever forget this as well. However don't expect anything in return, since we should always abide by the true nature of this world, right? It's because of my internal injuries that I am stopping myself here for today. Then Gi Moon told Moon Young, thanks for you help little bodyguard, I am about to purge this area of poison, so before it gets too dangerous, you should probably go rest elsewhere. Gi Moon cast detoxification of the white toad, exchange one poison for another, the poison that brings life. Mu Sung said possessor of 10,000 poisons, he's a man who's attained a realm of using poison to not only kill people but to be able to revitalize people with it as well, I can see why he's considered the master of poison, I only knew his title, I did not even know what his real name was, let alone what he even looked like and that's because these guys are known to be quite exclusive, since they choose to live only with their clanmates. Soon, Gi Moon told Mu Wan so it's you thank you for your help, I was planning to go to meet you, but you came to me instead, I just finished circulating the poison chi inside of me, so I am temporarily unable to move, 
So please don't be offended for not showing the full extent of my courtesy. Mu Wan said I understand, how are your injuries? Gi Moon said it was thanks to you that I was able to get better, with the honor of the possessor of 10,000 poisons on the line, I Gi Moon shall most definitely return this favor. Afterward, Gi Moon said we've arrived in the province of Annam, we should also be pretty close to a shopping district, why don't you buy some new clothes from there? If you are short of change, I can even buy it for you. Mu Wan replied I appreciate your offer, but I am fine. These clothes were a gift from a dear friend of mine. Gi Moon thought he's a man who knows when to be thankful and when to be humble. It's very rare to see young men like him in this day and age, not to mention he must have mastered his martial arts to an unfathomable degree, in order for him to do that, he must have learned from a renowned master or hails from a renowned family. Gi Moon said that's right I noticed that you received a wound on the left side of your body. Take it, after decades of research, I created these medical pills which provide immediate effects, they are called the Crimson Silvered Sacred Pills. It's able to provide you the immediate effects of an antidote, and it's also able to improve your internal state by 10 years. Mu Wan said that's quite valuable, is not it, it's too much for someone like me. Gi Moon said of course it's valuable, they are medicinal pills made by me, the possessor of 10,000 poison, however so saving my life, this is still a small price to pay. I highly suggest you use them when you are in a life-threatening situation, this is all I can give it to you for now, so enjoy it while it lasts. Mi Rieo asked Mu One will Master Jin continue to travel with the White Dragon Merchant Troop? Mu One replied well I did arrive at my destination, so it's probably best that I stop traveling with these folks. It's nothing big, but it's become obvious that I am a nuisance to these people here. It just means I will become more of a burden than of help of them. Mi Rieo asked then would you want to travel with us? We are planning to stay at the Broken Fist sect for the time being. We need to regroup with some martial artists from the Central Heavenly Alliance from there. Mu One thought the four pillars who once proudly supported the Northern Heavenly Sect, the Great Four of the Northern Heavens. Out of these four, there was one person who shared a very close bond with my father and he was someone I was proud to call as my uncle, however he was the first person to ultimately betray my father on that fateful day, Zhou Chun Wu. With his betrayal, he gained the approval of the Central Heavenly Alliance, and eventually settled down in the province of Annam in order to form the Broken Fist Sect. Mi Rieo said if you were to receive assistance from the Broken Fist sect, I am sure they will be able to find your uncle, it should not be too hard of a task for them. Mu One replied, thank you, but I will have to decline, there's something I need to do first, but once I finish that, I will make sure to come find you guys. Mi Rieo said take this, within the Tang family, only a small number of people have this, this is the Jade Tag, with this not even the Central Heavenly Alliance can question your authority or stop to investigate you you will essentially gain free entrance to us. Meanwhile, Gi Moon smirks and points at both of them. Gi Moon told Mu One I am sure you are aware of this already, please be careful, even the province of Annam's Gan Myung city is in a state of panic, just the fact that the Central Heavenly Alliance summoned us, I can already assume how bad the situation currently is, so do your best to keep yourself safe. Soon, when they arrived, Gi Moon said it's time for us to part ways, I pray we meet again. Mu Sung thought so he's leaving us now, what a waste, his personality may not be the best, but since he possesses an overwhelming amount of strength, I wanted to bring him into the Iron Brigade. I guess he's a man that I Mu Sung cannot tame. However I get a feeling we will meet each other again someday, in a world where even your closest friends can betray you. I hope the next time we meet, we are not enemies, Jin. Jin Sung thought this man will no doubt keep us safe, however judging by the state of our bodyguards, they are quite scared of this man and the Iron Brigade who are under a contract to protect our journey, they can't help but feel their pride has been wounded, and are keeping a heavy watch on this man, everyone's on edge, the mood is not looking too good. Not to mention this man is not someone who will listen or comply with some money, he does not move based on profits. Jin Sung told Mu One, you do what you want, we will also do our best to look for your uncle as well, if you are able to find anything about our third young master and the bodyguards that disappeared. Please let us know as soon as you can. Moon Young said, Thank you for all that you've done for me as well, Captain Gong. Senior brother is someone who shed light on my dreams, that is why I want to see just how far my dreams will take me. Moon Young told Mu One although I may not look like it, I am quite familiar with the roads around here and I am also able to read maps pretty well, I won't become a burden to you. I will make sure to protect my own life with my own hands, so don't worry too much. Jin Sung said I should have seen this coming, after all, you did spend all your time with him, alright, do what you want, 
I will respect your decisions. Just remember, if you ever want to come back the White Dragon Merchant Troop will always have a room for you, I will be waiting for your return. Soon, Demon Fist Chun Wu said I am glad you were able to arrive safely. Gi Moon said well on our journey over here we were ambushed, their insolence knows no end. Demon Fist said I've already dispatched the oracles from the investigation bureau of the Broken Fist sect, so it's only a matter of time before we find out their identities, as long as they are within the province of Unnam, they will not be able to avoid my eyes, once their identities are revealed, they will soon regret their actions. Gi Moon thought each time he speaks, it sends shivers down my spine, the great four of the northern heavens, have they always been this strong? I can see why they would have been upset for having to stay as branch leaders in the Northern Heavenly Sect. Gi Moon said from what I can tell, they were not your usual bandits from the mainland, fortunately we were able to receive assistance, without him we would have never been able to make it here. Demon Fist said it was a gift sent from the heavens it seems, the savior of the Tang family is also the savior of us, tell me who he is and I will make sure to reward him. Gi Moon said I was not able to find out who exactly this person was, but we will be meeting him again eventually so I shall make sure to find out who he is then, he's a splendid young man who won't let you down. Demon Fist laughed and said I can't wait to see him then. Back to Mu One, he told Moon Young I'm going to look for someone. It might even take a few days, so I want you to stay here and train in your martial arts, as I've always said before, make sure to hold your arms straight and focus on gathering as much chi as you can, I'm going to check on your progress after I come back, so make sure to work hard. Mu One asked the staff I am trying to find someone, it's possible that you might even know him. His name is the Three-Minded Scholar. The staff replied are you referring to that crazed lunatic? That's what everyone calls him around here. He was considered a genius at one point in his life but then one day he suddenly lost his mind and has not been in the right state of mind since, that's why he's also known as the Crazed Scholar. Mu One gave some gold coins to know the location of Crazed Scholar and make his move immediately. Soon, a man said the fact that you came to us to look for that bastard you've got guts, this bastard has to be sent by that crazed lunatic, get him. Mu One said I am not sure what you are talking about, but in situations like these, a little of beating is proven to be effective. So, do we still have a problem? The man asked what problem? I will tell you anything, you want to know. My name is Ma Dang and I am the owner of this gambling den. One day, out of nowhere the crazed lunatic showed up and emptied out the gambling den. Normally there would be a limit to how much you steal, but not him he stole an unbelievable amount of money from us. Now, we are not the type of people to make an honest living, so we still need money to operate our gambling den to make our living, there's nothing with that, right? So, in order to take back our money, and to stop this bastard from swindling more people in the future, we were planning to chop off at least one of his hands, but he would not stop laughing while pointing his finger up into the air. We thought he just lost his mind, but then all of a sudden, our minds became foggy, and the next thing we saw were the most beautiful women we've ever seen, they were literal goddesses, they were so alluring that we could not resist. Crazed lunatic said I guess humans are more in tune with their carnal desire than reason itself, or is it possible that these guys just lack self-control? Then I guess they are no different than an animal. Mu One thought did he put them under an illusion? Mu One asked do you know where he is? Ma Deng said I've been trying my best to locate that bastard in order to kill him, but I was not able to find much, the last I heard of him. He was apparently seen at the cattle market at the end of this town, I am not sure if that's true or not. Soon, a man from the market told Mu One, that crazed lunatic purchased 10 strong, healthy bulls from here a few days ago, I think I saw him herding all those bulls to that town over there. After questioning a few person, Mu One thought I am already pressed on time having to search for Mr. Huang, just where the hell are you, three-minded scholar? Mu One thought why did the senior disciple of the Gong Dong Monastery, Mu Jin tell me to seek out a peculiar man like him? I can't really say for sure that his actions have been consistent thus far. But it seems like he's trying to research the true nature of human beings, there's something about this man that's making me drawn to him, I am quite curious now, just what kind of a person is he? Then Mu One noticed the rock, he wonders I am sure I saw that at the entrance of this forest, did I seriously fall for some illusionary art? I could not even tell that I was in one, and I was sensing the entire area with my chi. These are not ordinary illusions. His strength is nothing to scoff at. No, I need to calm down. Let's not get agitated. They are nothing more than an illusionary technique. It's all just a mirage. Mu One said in a battle of wits whoever is wiser shall become the victor. However, you can always use brute force as well. It's time you show yourself. 
three-minded scholar. Soon, three-minded scholar said you were able to defeat Mu Guang of the Gongdong Monastery? Mu Wan replied I would not lie about that. Three-minded scholar thought even though Mu Guang is a bit stubborn and has a shitty personality, he's not weak by any means, you are telling me a guy like him was able to beat Mu Guang? Based on his appearance, he does not look that strong, but at the very least he has to be past the peak rank. Three-minded scholar said I can tell you possess an incredible amount of martial strength, but you are intentionally hiding it. Mu Wan said it's because I want to survive for as long as I can. Three-minded scholar said well, that's true I guess, bastards that like to show off their strength are the first to die, the ones that truly survive the longest are people like you, who hide their strength well. But wait, how did you break through my illusions? Were my divinations really that transparent? That should not be the case. My calculations should have been perfect. Mu Wan thought what's with the sudden shift of his mood, I guess all geniuses are like him? Mu Wan said I was able to tell just with my senses. I was able to figure out where I needed to attack. Three-minded scholars said so you are telling me your senses are that amazing, but I hope you know that one mistake would have led to your death. Mu Wan said I've been wondering why are your illusionary tactics so complicated? Are you planning to take over the heavens or something? Three-minded scholar said the heavens? That would be amazing if I could. Actually I really hope that I can accomplish that. Who are you? I am wondering who you really are. Mu One said that does not matter, I don't have an identity. Three-minded scholar said you naughty boy, so you are still going to act that way? Then why did you come looking for me? Mu One said it's because Elder Mu Guang told me there was a man I needed to meet, so I was merely satisfying my curiosity. Three-minded scholar asked are you nuts? Alright then feel free to ask me any questions. Mu One said a man went missing around this place about six months ago, do you know anything about him? Three-minded scholar asked this person that went missing are you related by blood? Mu One answered no. Three-minded scholar said then it's best that you give up now. Mu One said that's something I can't do, he's someone I am more than willing to put my life for. Three-minded scholar said then head to the Jade City, I don't know the exact details but recently, some strange incidents have been happening around there. Since the flow of the markets is not looking too good, I am willing to bet that it has something to do with the people that went missing, that is according to my sense. Mu One asked why don't you come with me? Three-minded scholar replied where the hell did that come from? You don't even know who I am, not to mention, I don't even know who you are either. Mu One said but my heart is telling me to do so. Three-minded scholar replied in the first place, I don't see why I need to get involved in your business, I am living quite comfortably here. Mu One said it's not because you are scared? While I was trying to locate you, I talked to a lot of different people, they all stated you were a crazed lunatic, but the way I see it, you are not crazy by nature, it's because something drove you into that position. You see, the actions of a truly crazed person are quite illogical and irrational, due to the fact that their sense of reasoning is numbed. But you on the other hand, it seems there is some form of consistency, I believe you are trying to understand what is the true nature of a human being. You wanted to see how people should react when pushed past their limit and how they are able to regain their sense of reasoning. That's what you are trying to find out. Am I wrong? Crazed scholar? Three-minded scholar laughed and said look at this bastard. You are a funny one. In any case I have no wish to join you on your journey. I bid you luck. Between heaven and earth, a man stands alone with his existence harmony is maintained. Without his existence the world loses its reason to exist. In the end, their existence is codependent. Well if we are bound by fate, I am sure we will meet again. Soon, Demon Fist said the White Dragon Merchant Troop? His son said yes, they have sent another representative to us. This is the sixth request for help we have received, including the White Dragon Merchant Troop. This is the sixth time the merchants in the province of Unnam have disappeared. This man is Demon Fist's eldest son Un Kyung. Un Kyung said it's time we listen to their requests, father. Demon Fist said I will take care of the ongoing issues in the province of Unnam. You may leave now. After Un Kyung left, Demon Fist said is he even eating properly? How can a man accomplish, looking feeble and weak like that? Demon Fist said Pyung, everything's fine about him, but he has a weak heart, in order to become a dominant ruler, your heart must never hold even the smallest amount of compassion, what are your thoughts on Un Kyung? This old man is investigation bureau of the broken fist sect head of the oracles Pyung. Pyung said are you talking about his qualification as an heir? He's respected by his followers and he's also quite shrewd. He's doing a good job. Demon Fist said he won't be the one who will inherit the family sect. I am worried how he will take this news. In any case, make sure to completely take Un Kyung out form this issue. If he finds out the truth, 
He will not stand still. Pyung said as you wish, please do not concern yourself with him, he just needs to slowly learn the truth, if my lord is a tiger, the young master is no doubt a tiger as well. Demon Fist said I am not satisfied with just the province of Annam. If I was satisfied then there would have been no reason for me to have betrayed my senior brother, sect leader Jin at the time. The North Wall, Quan Ho, was someone who was satisfied with his duty to prevent the invasion of the Silent Knight, he had no ambitions, even though he had all the power and might to conquer the world. I have no idea why he chose to live his life dedicated towards that one task. If you possess a tremendous amount of strength, it's only natural for you to exercise it. The Central Heavenly Alliance has started to make their move. They even summon the Tang family before the Central Heavenly Alliance makes any more advancements. I will properly finish the task that I started. Pyung said there is nothing to worry about. This is why I have decided to follow you, my lord. Please just focus on looking at the task before you. I shall deal with all the minor inconveniences. But my lord, we will be dealing with quite a bit of bloodshed. At the bare minimum, a few hundred or quite possibly a few thousand deaths. Demon Fist said in order to achieve a great cause, sacrifices must be made, if I was afraid of some resentment, then there was no reason for me to have chosen this path. It's been a while since I've last witnessed the reign of blood. Soon, Mu Sung came to meet on Kyung. Mu Sung thought unlike his father, he does not seem militaristic at all but he still holds a strong presence, not to mention I can sense dignity in his speech and mannerism. His eyes are also bright and his actions are quite graceful, I can tell the blood of a renowned family runs in his veins. An Kyung thought leader of the Iron Brigade, he has the same eyes as my father. Mu Sung said we apologize for coming at this ungodly hour, so allow me to get straight to the point. If we had to be honest, we are at a loss, please help us. It's been about four days since we've arrived at the province of Annam, and we still have not been able to find any clues or information pertaining to the people that went missing. Even the person sent ahead of time has seriously disappeared as well. Not to mention, our encounter with the Crimson Ghosts has put us on edge, as we are unsure of what dangers lie ahead of us. That is why, in order for us to minimize any further losses, we believe we require the assistance of the Broken Fist sect. Mu Huan said also, by helping the White Dragon Merchant Troop, who are one of the greatest merchant in the entire country, it will allow for the Broken Fist sect to deepen their relationship with them. I believe this is more of a benefit than anything else. An Kyung said what kind of assistance do you require? Is it military support or sharing of information? If it's information that you seek, then I will have to be completely honest with you. At first, we believed that these attacks were orchestrated by simple bandits. But after the recurring disappearances, we realize that we've been too complacent. These issues are still under investigation and so we do not have much information in store for you guys. Jin Sung said the person in charge of our journey this time is our young lady. She is the younger sister of Master Jam Young who recently went missing, that is why we are prepared to do anything for the sake of our family. An Kyung said I see, if that's the case, the broken fist sex shall do whatever we can in order to help you find your missing brother. An Kyung thought it's unfortunate, but you are not the person I should be negotiating with. The people that will bring the most amount of profit are those guys. An Kyung said it's time that we got onto the main topic of discussion, head strategists. I pray we come to a favorable result, shall we get started? An Kyung thought justice and honor are things that no longer exist in the world of Miram. All that's left are the small benefits and profits as we weigh the cost and value of human lives, but it was not always like this. Yes the northern region, the rough and barren lands, those were the times if I look back now that was when I was truly the happiest those peaceful times when I was not confined to anything. Mu One said senior brother, please teach me martial arts, pretty please, I am tired of studying the books I don't know why my father only makes me study. An Kyung said if I do that, I am going to get in trouble with your father, just wait until you are a bit older. An Kyung thought I am truly sorry for what happened to you, however I already chosen a path that I can no longer abandon even if it leads me to a cliff, I will still not be able to get off this path. Mu One. Back to Mu One, he recalled back three-minded scholar told him someone is planning something quite enormous, there's no way all of this is happening just for someone to take over the province of Annam or the Broken Fist sect. But regardless of who it is the moment you become involved in this situation you will inevitably become a part of their fate. Mu One thought I had a feeling he knew more than he let on, but at least I was able to learn that I need to head to Jade City. What was his name again? The Crimson Ghost's general, he said the same thing as well. He was merely the tool while that person drew the bigger picture. He was quite skilled, it's hard to imagine him serving someone else. 
There is a high chance that person is the true mastermind behind all of the incidents. Suddenly Mu One noticed the sound of a lyre. He wonders what is this ominous melody? Is it calling out to me? That seems to be the case. Rather than becoming a master in the way of the sword of the blade becoming a master in the way of the sound is much harder to accomplish. That is why only a handful of them exist. There he is. What fearsome sound arts he has. A man said you finally came, Master Jin. Mu Wen said that's because you were calling for me, you seem to know who I am, but I don't know who you are. The man said how rude of me, I apologize. My name is GM Dan Yop, you are just as amazing as that person had said, you are the first person to ever answer the call of my divine sound of the thousand distance. Dan Yop said I am sure you've already met him before, his name is Goon Y and he is a close friend of mine. Mu Wen said so it was you, the person responsible for the issues in the province of Unnam. Dan Yop said interesting goon why told you that much? Well then again I can see why he did so. It's the first time I've seen goon why be put into that miserable state, that is why I am quite curious about you. If it's okay may I ask which martial school you are from? Mu One said I am not from any martial school, my martial arts are something that has been passed down from my family. Dan Yop said then your family must be impressive. Mu One answered no, it's been a long time since we were destroyed and forgotten. Dan Yop said if I had to be honest with you, my plans never included the possibility of a man like Master Jin to exist, why have you come to this place? Were you perhaps summoned by the Central Heavenly Alliance? Mu One said I have nothing to do with the Central Heavenly Alliance. I am here to look for a person, six months ago an acquaintance of mine who works for the White Dragon Merchant Troop disappeared in this area. The people who went missing, are they still alive? Dan Yop said so you are here due to personal reasons but yet they are still alive. Mu One said then let them go, if you can do that, I promise I will quietly withdraw from this place. Dan Yop said how I wish I can do that, however, that's not as easy as it sounds. Mu One said and why is that? Dan Yop said now hold on a second it's bit hard to explain everything to you right now, but just know that releasing them will put me in a difficult position. So how about we do this instead? After I finish my task, I will safely return them back to you. With the honor of my name, I swear to uphold that promise. I guess that's still not enough for you what a dilemma we are in. I finally found someone I've taken quite a liking to but it seems we are fated to spill blood. Quite sad indeed. Master Jin, I am sorry to inform you but this will not be the place of our fight. Mu One asked where are the missing people, answer me now. Dan Yop said a fight is a woeful event. Mu One dash over cast slices attack, Dan Yop dodged and said yin and yang. They say the world I know is always two reality and illusion shall become as one, as the mind chooses what it wants to see. The sky is known to dream the secrets of the night and the secrets of the night shall inevitably be awakened, the sorrowful people of the ruined lands. We must hurry as there is not time to was. Mu One then noticed, Dan Yop ran away. Mu One said wait for me I will soon hunt you down. Soon, Mu One back to find Moon Young. Moon Young said you are here. Since you were gone for a long time I thought you might have abandoned me or forgot about me, so I was a bit worried, but every time I had those thoughts, I redirected it all towards my training, I did a good job right? Mu One said I heard that kids develop pretty fast, but damn good work. We will be heading to Jade City, let's get ready. Meanwhile, Yak Ran said it finally stopped raining while they are having a comfortable meeting inside, I am always having to do this shit. Inside the room, the men who were injured kept asking the physician for medicine. The physician ignored them and said, I have too many patients to take care of. I will attend to you right away. The physician left, muttering, I just wasted my precious medicine for no reason. And then he revealed his real identity. I am Chung In, rank Chung In of the Hidden Moon's Heavens, he declared. Damn it, this is labor abuse, Chung In grumbled. I should be given proper time to rest. As soon as I finished my mission, they sent me on another one to the province of Unnam. Even if the mission is of utmost importance, this is still abuse, not to mention the piss poor pay. Stingy bastards. These superiors only know how to overwork people. They expect me to trail the person in the province of Annam, keep watch on the man named Jin. Are they expecting me to clone myself? Then again, what am I expecting from these guys when they have never stepped foot outside of their meeting rooms? They only know how to order people around. Chung In's crow named Dancer and his dog named Earth. Both are his partner to assist his job. Chung In said I wonder what disguise I should use this time, just wait for me, Jin this master of 10 transformation Chung In shall come find you soon. Back to Mu One, Moon Young asked where did you get all of these baggage give them to me, 
I will carry them. Even though I may not look like it, these are the things I learned as a kid, long distance traveling and outdoor camping. Well I don't have much experience in either of them but, I will still make sure to help you as much as I can, I won't ever become a burden to you. Mu one asked are you sure you are okay? Moon Young replied I am fine I've lived my entire life like this, so I'm used to it. In fact I am pretty happy since I get to travel with an experienced senior brother who trains me as well. Mu one said our Moon Young is a bright and courageous boy. Moon Young said senior brother not long after I was born, my mother abandoned me. My father was busy working as a bodyguard so he was not able to come home often. I had to live on my own for a long time, so I was pretty lonely but my father really loved me still. Moon Young's dad said forgive me, I am such an incompetent dad who can barely take care of his own son, just a little bit more and I will have enough money to open a dumpling shop for the two of us. So until then, it's going to be a little bit difficult for our Moon Young. Don't cry and take good care of the house be brave. Make sure to show proper to other adults and keep on smiling if you can do all that. It will give strength to this father to finish his task. Moon Young said and soon after that, my father died from an accident. Mr. Huang said I've heard stories about you, your father was a close friend of mine, my name is Huang Chao. If it's okay with you, why don't you live with us? Moon Young cried and said, thank you very much. Back to present, Moon Young said the people who let a child abandoned by the world to live with a white dragon merchant troop was Mr. Huang and Captain Gong, but my talent in swordsmanship was pretty bad so I suffered quite a bit. But senior brother the place we are it is pretty interesting. The province of Annam was super hot and humid, as soon as we entered Gan Myung City, the weather became nice and cool. Mu One said you are right, since this place is located on a plateau, it's much cooler than the other places. Moon Young we are going to have to sleep out here today, if we start moving again early tomorrow morning, we should be able to arrive at Jade City by tomorrow evening. Soon, Mu One thought I had no idea his life was like that, he's very much like me. The time when I had to train alone in the Jack Mountain, his age is about the same as I was back then. Mu One told Moon Young said come at me. Moon Young thought am I finally going to receive direct training from him? I am scared, how am I supposed to attack him? No wait. Why, he's only holding a chopstick, yet I feel so much pressure and threat from him. It's insane. Mu One blinked to behind launched an attack and said if you are always going to be frozen out of fear, do you plan to fight defensively for the rest of your life? You won't be able to accomplish anything with passion alone. You must become colder. Moon Young thought he barely tapped me and I got sent flying. It's different he's on a completely different level than those guys from before. After exchanging some blows with them, I thought I got a little better with using my sword but if I look back on it now, I only block their attacks. Senior sister was the one who provided support and took care of them for me. I practiced hard every single day, but am I still really that weak? Or is senior brother just unbelievably strong? Well it's probably both. Then this will be a great learning experience for me, I need to do my best. Mu One said when you wield a sword you need to let your arms extend a bit more. It allows you to have more power behind your swing. You are still quite stiff, that's why your reflexes are too slow. After a while, Mu One said we will stop here for tonight, use the three foundational cultivation technique to properly circulate the chi inside your body, resting is also an important part of training. You are doing a good job. Meanwhile, General of the Crimson Ghost Nam Goon Y thought what a vicious bastard, I've been circulating my chi non-stop for the past couple of days, and my wounds still won't disappear. I am only in this state because I let my guard down. I am the greatest man and general out there, I won't be making the same mistake twice, you better watch out. Soon, he went to find Dan Yop. Dan Yop said looks like you are better now. Goon Y said I have not made a full recovery, but I am okay to start moving. I should just be grateful that I am still alive. I thought my head was going to get chopped off that time, he's a dangerous bastard. When you are twirling a leaf, it means you are concerned about something, did you perhaps meet that bastard for yourself? Dan Yop said yep it's going to get even more complicated. He's not normal, how should I say, he's like an enormous rock. Wall? Mountain? That's the impression he gave me, this whole time we never knew a man like him existed. He just suddenly appeared, he's someone we won't ever be able to negotiate with. Goon Y said I see, so what's our plan then? Are we just going to give up? Dan Yop said no we can't do that. Even though that man was someone we did not take into consideration when creating our plan, we can't simply give up just because of him. Goon Y said sounds good to me, even if I can't beat him I can at least protect your life, so just trust me and let's see through this till the end. 
Dan Yop said we've come too far to give up now, even though we poured out heart and soul into preparing this plan, an unexpected variable just had to show up. I guess this is why they say the world is worth living for. Anything can happen, anyhow things are going to get a little bit interesting from now on. The situation needs to be this dire, if we want the slumbering silent night to awaken. Back to Mew 1, they met Tang family once again. Gi Moon said we are currently on our way to Jade City, may I ask where Master Jin is headed? Mew 1 replied we are also on our way to Jade City were not the two of you going to meet the members of the Central Heavenly Alliance at the Broken Fist sect? Gi Moon said well the Central Heavenly Alliance has made changes to their plan, they said we need to hurry and meet them at Jade City, but thankfully the Broken Fist sect has provided some bodyguards to protect us on our journey to Jade City. A man said Elder Tang, what seems to be the issue? Gi Moon said that's right forgive me for the abrupt stop, this is Master Jin, the one I told you before, he's the one who saved me. Then he told Jin this man here is the eight arms of the heavens, General Su Guang, he's one of the five martial masters in the Broken Fist sect. Mu One said I also heard that he is highly knowledgeable in the way of the fist. Su Guang said you speak too highly of me, I heard you are quite skilled despite your young age. Mu One thought I know him well, does he not recognize who I am? Gi Moon asked will you allow Master Jin to accompany us? Su Guang replied if he's skilled in martial arts then it's not a bad idea to have him with us, let's head to Jade City together. Soon, when they rest and eat. Su Guang said hurry and eat before it gets too cold. Moon Yung curious and thought is not this the same meal that senior brother cooked for me last night? Su Guang asked how is it? Does it suit your taste? Mu Wan replied yes thank you for the meal. Su Guang thought Jin? Is it because he shares the same surname as him? He resembles him as well, if he was still alive, he would have been around the same age as him. No, that would not be the case, the fourth generation sect leader, Quan Ho never passed on his martial arts to him. He was very keen on only making him study the books, but that man I can tell he definitely learned some sort of powerful martial arts. So that can't be the case, but why? The memories that I've been trying so hard to forget, why does it keep reappearing whenever I look at him? Mu one that young child was forced to live on his own, locked in the barren lands of the north, he had to endure all by himself, and eventually he passed away. After that fateful day, it's been ten years, I committed an act that no martial artist should never have done. But what else could I do, when even the great pillars of the north the great four of the northern heavens turned their backs on them? Yes I was scared, I did not have the courage to stand up for what was right. I was overwhelmed with fear, if I hesitated, then I would have been killed, if I did not follow what everyone else was doing, then I would have been killed. I am a sinner under the heavens, with each passing day, I felt even more guilt and shame I thought I finally started to leave all of that in the past. But that man is stirring up those feelings once more, but what if he is truly him? What am I going to do then? But if that's the case if that man is him, I don't know if I can even ask where he's from anymore. Am I even allowed to look at his face properly? If I beg for forgiveness no, will my guilt be washed away? No there's no reason for me to be worried, there's no way it's him, I highly doubt it, it can't be him, it's not him. Mu One pondered the disappearance of Mr. Huang, what is their objective, is it possible that they are the silent night? Suddenly, someone yell what the hell is this? General, this place is littered with corpses. Gi Moon said what is all this? Quite gruesome, were they attacked by some wild beast? Su Guang said was there another ambush that we were not aware of? Mu One thought another ambush? then that means there's been more cases like this in the past and the Broken Fist sect knew about them. Not to mention, the Central Heavenly Alliance is treating these incidents quite seriously. There are not any signs of tooth or claw marks on these wounds, they are not caused by weapons as well. Gi Moon said you can tell just by the looks of it right? It's hard to believe it, but it looks like someone ripped them all apart with their bare hands, what an absurd amount of strength they possess. Mu One said no matter how strong they are, being able to rip apart their opponents with their bare hands is not an easy task. Another thing to note is that even if they were born with strong homicidal instincts, this kind of attack goes beyond all reason. If they were proficient in martial arts, then they would have found a more cleaner and effective way to kill these people. Gi Moon said so the person who ripped these people apart has to possess an enormous amount of strength, and the fact that they would go out of their way to rip people apart with their bare hands means they are an insane bast with no sense of reasoning. Su Guang reminds we will soon arrive at Jade City, don't let your guard down and keep stricter watch on your surroundings, if you feel like someone is an enemy, then do not hesitate to kill them. Let's hurry and get going. 
Location broken 5th Sec Jade City Branch Valiant Blue Moon. Gi Moon said General M, Master Jin has some personal business to take care of, so he will need to step outside quite frequently, having to do that while staying in the upper district will be quite burdensome for him. That's why I believe it's best that he stays at a place where he can discreetly get in and out of. It will also reduce his chance of danger. Su Guang replied I see then I pray for your safely and success. After some times, Moon Young asked was there a reason for us to leave that place? Mu Wan replied no. Moon Young asked then would not it have been better for us to stay at the Valiant Blue Moon? They are part of the Broken Fist sect, so they were willing to provide assistance for us as well. Mu Wan said receiving assistance from the Broken Fist sect, Moon Young if the White Dragon Merchant Troop came to this area, which tavern do you think they would have chosen to stay at? Moon Young replied since the White Dragon Merchant Troop always moves in a large group, they will probably choose the biggest tavern they can find. Are you planning to start looking for clues starting with those areas? Since Jade City is not that big, you are thinking that there would not be a lot of places that the White Dragon Merchant Troop could have stayed at. Within Jade City, this place the Priceless Tavern, is the biggest one they have. They also said most large groups generally stay at this place. Moon Young asked are there any rooms? The staff replied as you can tell, the only thing we have left are the rooms itself it's quite empty, is not it? This is all thanks to the nasty rumors that have been going around in this area. Ever since six months ago, this place has been as good as dead. How long are you planning to stay? Mu One said about three or four days, we might stay longer, depending on the situation. The staff said I was planning to shut this place down in a few days, but thanks to you guys, I will be able to operate for a bit longer. I shall take you to the best room that we have. Soon, Moon Young said do you think the White Dragon Merchant Troop and the Iron Brigade will come to this place? Mu One replied I would not doubt it, since everyone is moving in groups. We are all bound to run into each other, so I am sure they will eventually arrive at this place as well. Moon Young said the Iron Brigade, White Dragon Merchant Troop, Broken Fist Sect, Central Heavenly Alliance, who else do you think we will meet? Mu One said I am not sure, but one thing I am certain is that all of this is just the beginning of what's to come. Soon, the staff came in to serve the foods. After Mu Wan and Moon Young ate the food then they fainted. The staff thought they are fast asleep. As expected, there's nothing better than the effects of the daydream pills. White Dragon Merchant Troops Moon Young, he's not that important, the man that I am after is this Wan Jin. I heard he's peculiar fellow with a lot to hide. Not much is known about him, as he just appeared out of nowhere, is he backed by someone? I am confused as to why there is nothing about him. It revealed he was Chung In. Chung In thought is he really with the White Dragon Merchant Troop just to find someone, there's no intel on his martial skills, social status, age or anything in general, seriously who the hell are you? Let's take a closer look. Then Chung In being attracted by Mu One's blade. Soon, Mu One thought what happened? I let my guard down. To think I'd let my guard down, even though it has not been too long since I've started to experience the world of Murim, I still have a ways to go you need to focus. So it was him, wait is he possessed by the snow flower's aura, he's not budging. Were you the one who made me regain my senses, snow flower? You truly are a bewitched blade, and this guy he has the same chi as the tavern owner, is he perhaps using a transformation art? But even if I let my guard down, I should have been able to tell a transformation art with my chi sense alone. But how was I also unable to detect a trace of a sleeping pill laced in our food? He's definitely a martial master then. Mu Wan asked in any case who the hell are you? Chung In answered I am a member of the Black Moon from a secret organization that is skilled infiltration and gathering of intel the Hidden Moon. I am Chung In from the highest division the Heaven's Rank. The Black Moon Sichun branch leader Mei Wu Ryong has ordered me to observe a man named Jin and to find information pertaining to him. Mu Wan thought is it because of the bewitched Qi? Why is he answering my question? Mu Wan said I see then let's see how much the Black Moon knows, in Myung City, some people were ripped to pieces, do you know anything about this incident? Chung In said a few days ago some crazed people started to appear in Gan Myung City, they completely lost their minds and were many times stronger, than the average human beings they also could not differentiate between their families and friends as they ripped them all apart. The Central Heavenly Alliance and the Broken Fist sect has determined that the cause of their insanity is from a special type of poison and has summoned the elite members of the Tang family. Someone has purposefully spread this poison and were the ones behind the disappearances in the province of Unnam. Currently the Black Moon are looking at this incident from multiple angles. Next moment, Chung In back to normal when his trained pet broke the windows. 
Mu One said the black moon's hidden moons, Chung In of the heavens rank division, why don't we have a talk? Chung In thought what? How does he know all of that? I can't remember a single thing after I grabbed his blade, did everything get revealed to this man? Just what the hell happened to me? I am so fucked. Chung In asked what did you do to me? Were my secrets revealed? I am a disgrace to the hidden moons. After I kill you, I shall kill myself. Only death shall atone for my sins. Mu One said are you sure you won't regret that decision? Chung In said I am a member of the hidden moons, I will never regret my actions. Mu One beat him down after a few rounds of attack, soon Moon Young awake and asked what the hell happened here? Chung In asked where did a monster like you come from? Earth Dancer you bastards, I can't believe I am in this state, hurry and kill me, you demon. Mu One said I don't even have to kill you myself, now that your secrets have all been revealed to me, what do you think the Black Moon will do if they found out? If that did happen I am sure you will probably try to commit suicide again, however you won't need to do that. Although the Black Moon wants to know more about me, I have no desire to know anything about the Black Moon, there is only one thing that I want to know, the people who went missing in the province of Annam, I want to know who is behind all of this. Chungin replied what are you implying? Mu One said come with us, if you can do that I will let you gather as much information you want about me, but in return you will have to tell me everything that you know about the people who went missing until we find out everything that we want to know from each other, why don't we form an alliance? How does that sound with you? Back to Gi Moon, he said so this is the man who went insane. Su Guang said yes that's correct, we were only able to capture him with the assistance of martial masters. Before he completely lost his mind, he was able to tell us his identity, he is apparently an informant for the Iron Brigade. We still have not confirmed if that's the case but what is your take on this, Elder Tang? This is not your typical case of insanity, these symptoms seem similar to rabies. Gi Moon said in any case, it seems I will have to take a closer look, will you be able to put him to sleep? Su Guang said we've already injected some sedatives into his blood, but it does not seem to have any effect. Gi Moon said if the sedatives are not working then that means his blood veins are distorted is this really caused by a poison? Alright please step back for a bit, General M. This is a poison extracted from the blood roots in the southern islands, not only does it reduce bloodlust, but it also slows down the brain. It's an excellent sedative for putting people to sleep. I will now be using my poison arts, so please stay right there. No reaction it means it's not an animal-based poison. The poison I am currently using only reacts to animal-based poison. You see poison can divide it into three different categories. There are animal-based poison, plant-based poisons and lastly mineral-based poisons. So there is a reaction with the mineral-based poison. But wait, there's something off about this. Gi Moon reminds me Rieo don't kill him. Su Guang stepped in and hold the man on wall. Gi Moon said the symptoms are too extreme. Mineral-based poisons typically drain the life out of the affected person and will bring them to a slow death. However, I've never seen a case where a mineral-based poison is able to explosively increase the power of a human being and also cause them to fall even more into the depths of madness. Next moment, they notice the monster died. Gi Moon said it does not seem like you were the one who caused his death. It was due to the sudden increase in his strength, that his internal organs were not able to withstand all of that force. In any case, let's take the body elsewhere and have a thorough investigation. Even if it takes me all night I will do whatever I can to find the origin of this mystery. But I must warn you now something unimaginably big is happening. Chung In thought how did someone like me, a heaven's rank division of the black moon's hidden moons, end up in this situation. Not only did I fuck up my mission I ended up having to travel with this man as well. If the Black Moon found out about this, words can't describe the amount of shame I would be faced with. It's just like Branch Leader said he's not an ordinary fellow. There are not many young martial artists who can even compete against me. Only the seven lesser skies have been able to do so. Chung In told Moon Young am I a circus monkey to you? Stop staring at me. Moon Young said I am sorry it's just that you are really interesting but that face of yours, is that your real face? Chung In said you think I can only change my face? I can change my body as well. The same goes for my clothes, my title is not just for show. I am the master of 10 transformation, you understand now? Chung In thought ever since he caught wind of my first transformation he seems to immediately recognize who I am, no matter what transformation I use. Shit, I've definitely gotten myself into a sticky situation. I came here to observe this man, but to think I'd end up being observed by him. This is all because of that strange blade of his. If only I did not get possessed by that blade. Mu One wonders why are you reacting again, Snowflower? A bewitched blade that no one can wield, but me. 
Chung Yin is a martial master that I can't be careless around, he's also someone who does not possess a weak mental strength. But what surprised me is the fact that he was easily possessed by the snow flower's bewitching aura, what a potent bewitched blade I have, but ever since we've arrived at the province of Annam, this blade has been more restless than ever, the bewitched chi also seems to have gotten stronger. I got that when I went to the province of Annam, it was a rock that fell from the sky, and a certain tribe worshipped it as a sacred object, but that tribe was massacred so the rock does not belong to anyone anymore. Mu one thought is it because the material of this blade is closer to its origin? I will need to make some time and visit the place where the tribe once resided. With the way it is, the bewitched chi will become too strong for me to handle. There is a chance that even I might lose my mind with this blade, I need to be careful. Mu one told the equipment stall owner if you can tell me where you acquired this blade I will give you six silver pieces. The owner said okay you better not go back on your word, so a few months ago, when the black market opened up a lot of exceptional weapons became available to the public. That's where the steel blade came from. Most of the merchants in Jade City got their products from the black market. My senior brother should know the location of the black market. Do you want me to find that out for you as well? Chungin said I know where that black market is. This blade is not common in the province of Annam. It's definitely made outside of this place. Mu One said that's correct it's most likely forged in the mainland. Probably in the northern parts of the province of Honam. After looking through the market, I noticed that most of the weapons were from the mainland, it's already hard enough for foreign merchants to enter in the province of Annam, so the fact that there are a lot of foreign weapons in this market is quite unusual. Chung In thought what an impressive man, was that what he was trying to find out, when he was circling around the market earlier. This man he's not only skilled in martial arts, he also has remarkable intuition. Mu Wan said alright, let's head towards the black market. Meanwhile, a man said these weapons are in perfect condition, the prices are the same as last time. If you want to buy one, step forward. Someone asked are they really in perfect condition? Could you tell me where you acquired these weapons? The man replied don't ask any questions, if you are that worried, you are always free to leave. The man with cape said as I thought, you did not acquire them through proper means I finally caught your tails, you rats. Then the man's subordinates start kill everyone, the man said you rat like bastards, have you never heard of the oracles from the investigative bureau of the broken fist sect? It means you guys are fucked, who told you it was okay to pull this shit in our domain. Oracles, kill all of the bastards here and capture the man who is trying to escape, if you can't tell who's on their side, kill them all. That includes elders, women and children. This is the order given to us by the leader of the oracles commence at once. Meanwhile, Pyung said an old man is throwing knives, while the maid is fighting with a kitchen knife? It's a situation where we can't tell who is a normal civilian and who is not. In situations like this, it's best to assume everyone is an enemy and kill them all. When did bastard like them infiltrate the province of Annam? How dare they scheme in the territory reigned by the Broken Fist sect? If only the merchants that enter the province of Annam lost their products, it would not have been a big issue, but they caused our reputation and trust to take a hit. This has given the Central Heavenly Alliance to come up with an excuse to enter into the province of Annam. This is the sacred territory that my lord and I earned when we betrayed the Northern Heavenly Sect. We tried our best to keep the Central Heavenly Alliance away from this place, but now all of that is about to fall apart. Back to earlier, Demon Fist said make sure to find out who these bastards are, do so before the Central Heavenly Alliance arrives at our place, we must resolve this issue ourselves, even if it means we completely erase Jade City out of existence, kill everyone who might have helped or cooperated with these bastards. Pyung said yes. My lord, as the leader of the oracles, I shall do whatever I can to restore honor to our glorious broken fist sect, please do not worry, my lord everything shall go according to your plan. Back to Mu One, Chung In said this is gruesome, it's a complete slaughter, what should we do? I think we were too late. Mu One thought these guys they are the crimson ghosts from before wait, the bodies of normal civilians are mixed in with the crimson ghosts? Meanwhile, Su Guang thought for these silver scale gauntlets did I really need to follow my lord to this place? Ever since he settled in the province of Annam, the lord that I trusted has completely changed, he has always been violent but he's never been this bad. What should I do from now on? I wanted some time to think for myself, that is why I quietly accepted the order to protect the Tang family on their journey to Jade City, but at this rate what is my future with the Broken Fist sect? Then his man came in and said some unknown martial artists are wreaking havoc in Jade City. Su Guang said what is this? Who the hell are they? Even at the costs of your life, do whatever it takes to protect the lives of the Tang family. 
I shall deal with those bastards. Soon, he noticed a man killing the villages and cast eight fists of the gods. Then he noticed it was Jiang O from the oracles. Jiang O said we were ordered by our lord. Su Guang shocked and wonders our lord? Then the killing of these people is the will of our lord? Jiang O said we finally located those bastards, that is why our lord has commanded us to completely annihilate these people. It's because those bastards have disguised themselves as the people of Jade City. Su Guang said even if that's the case, whether they are normal civilians or disguised enemies, how could you guys kill them all without even checking? Jiang O said while we were pursuing those bastards, we were suddenly attacked by an elderly man, that was not all, he was also assisted by a nanny who was carrying a baby on her back, what else are we supposed to do? We don't have the luxury to tell who is who, if you don't believe us, you can go see for yourself so that the Broken Fist sect does not suffer again. We were ordered to kill everyone we see in Jade City. Su Guang said I understand now, this is all due to the incompetence of the higher-ups, you guys from the oracles could not have done anything. Just sleep for now. Su Guang thought Zhou Chan Wu, how far are you planning to go, you murderous bastard, is this all there is to your will? Meanwhile, while oracles group annihilate civilians, Gun Wai appeared and said even if we were the ones who started this mess, you guys took it to a whole new level, thanks for doing my job, you guys really are a bunch of crazy bastards. But you see when we are both considered crazy bastards, why are you the one to decide who gets to live in a nice place like this, and who gets banished to the barren lands? From now on I will tear you all to pieces. Back to earlier, Dan Yop told him you need to cause an even greater disruption, the more cruel and brutal you are, the better it is for us. Back to Mew 1, Mew 1 thought is this truly the world you guys wanted to create for something like this. Mew 1 then noticed oracles as members. Mew 1 cast sound telepathy told Chung and don't be alarmed and listen carefully I am not sure if you already know this, but these guys are the oracles from the investigative bureau of the Broken Fist sect, they are a dark organization that specialized in gathering intel for the Broken Fist sect but even I am not sure as to why these guys are massacring all of the innocent civilians. Mew 1 thought is not that the fist of 100 days? Back in the Northern Heavenly Sect, the technique was an intensive fist technique that caused your hand to become scaly like the skin of a turtle and harder than boulder. This also caused your skin to take on a whitish shade. This teaching originated when the ward with the Silent Knights reached its peak. The people who learned this teaching were a division specialized in killing with their fists, but the nature of learning this teaching was too fast to be considered normal. Because of this, there were negative side effects, one of the biggest issues with this teaching was the numbing of their senses, which caused numerous accidents to take place. Not only that, it also drastically reduced their lifespan, that was why the Fist of 100 Days was declared a forbidden martial art and was sealed away. Mu One said Uncle Joe as if killing these innocent civilians was not enough, you view the lives of your loyal subordinates as mere tools as well, just how far are you planning to take this? Mu One killed them in one blow. Chung in shocked and thought to think there was a swordsman like him that existed in this world. The problem is not his talent in the sword, it's the fact his entire mood and the aura he gives off is completely different than normal. What a frightening aura. Chung in told Moon Young from what I can tell, this is your first time seeing this side of him, let's put some space between him and us, and follow him. His mood is completely different from before, he's definitely dangerous. Chung in thought I hope he's not consumed by that bewitched blade. Chung In then told Dancer and Earth I am going to follow him from a distance, don't lose sight of him and continue to pursue him as well but if you guys feel like our lives will be in danger, forget about the mission and just run. Back to Su Guang, he noticed oracles as Ma Guang killing a lady. Su Guang asked what the hell you are doing. Ma Guang said this bitch is one of those bastards, they are a threat to the broken fists. Do you know what your problem is, you can't tell when your path will lead to a dead end since you don't even bother looking at your surroundings. You are too absorbed in your own ideology, if you are really that righteous, why did you partake in the betrayal that time? Everyone knew that Jin Quan Ho would have never colluded with the Silent Knight, so why did not you step up and protect his honor back then? Our Lord considers you as a troublesome thorn in his side, do you know why he assigned you on a bodyguard mission and sent you over this place? Please have a peaceful afterlife. Su Guang thought in the end, you chose to kill me as well, I've become a hunting dog that has lost its use. Meanwhile, Pyong asked are you sure it was that place? A man replied yes I am certain, it's the place where the white pavilion was supposed to be built before it was stopped, it's a rocky mountain that has been abandoned for many years and that's the place that the bastard escaped to. Pyong said they say it's always the darkest below the lamp to think he took refuge in such an obvious place. The man said thankfully, 
The martial artists from the Central Heavenly Alliance have not arrived at that place. Pyung said exactly, that is why we must take care of this incident now, even the slightest mistake can become detrimental to our Lord. Pyung thought now that we've discovered who's been causing the appearance of madmen, once we properly subdue these bastards, the foundation of the Broken Fist sect will become solidified. If we also rescued the merchants that went missing, then nobody would be able to defy the Broken Fist sect anymore. I am thankful that you bastards came into our territory to cause this mess, a crisis will always become an opportunity. Back to Mu One, he spotted Su Guang seriously injured and both arms being ripped off. Su Guang noticed Mu One and asked are you perhaps Jin Mu One? Mu One replied yes that's correct, when I was young, you were the one who taught me the basics of martial arts. Su Guang said I was right, you were him, thank god you were alive, I am so relieved. I don't know if any of this holds any meaning now, but I heard that you were killed the amount of guilt I had was unbearable as I spent every waking moment living in it a young child who did nothing wrong how hard it must have been to endure everything. I am so sorry for not coming to save you. I had no courage, I was a coward. I am so sorry. Please you must stop the violent destruction that Zhou Chanwu is planning. Please you must end this hellish night. In truth I should be the one who should be stopping. Then Su Guang died. 